okay, well, I start from the premise of what the Federal Reserve does really matters. And unfortunately, we have a uh, organization that is essentially incompetent running monetary policy. It's been a slow degradation from when Greenspan started in uh, you know the late 80s. He was okay for five or six years, and then he started to kind of believe his own BS and started to pursue policies that I thought were on the reckless side, although compared to what eventually has happened, that was all kid stuff. But if we recap, we had the equity bubble that was caused by it, it, um, uh, incompetent monetary policy, um, and, and the Y2K liquidity injection in, in the end is what blew the top off the stock market in 99 and set up for the collapse in 2000. Regretfully, 9-11 came along. It was obviously horrible for the people involved. It was also unfortunate because the recession that we had was underway already as a consequence of the first bubble. So the Fed escaped blame for that, and it didn't take them very long to create another bubble, this one in real estate. Meanwhile, they did not adequately supervise the banks. Who the, the, the role of super, uh, the supervisory role, which they had, they had taken on when Greenspan got Glass-Steagall um, uh, repealed in 1988. So we had two bubbles, and in the wake of almost imploding the financial system in the real estate bubble, they started QE. And QE uh, led to more QE and not so much QT and led to NERP, uh, yeah, sorry, ZERP, zero interest rates during the COVID mania, not praise. And um, so... What we have is a Federal Reserve that has created two huge bubbles and a lot of misallocated capital and has enabled an enormous amount of can kicking on the part of the government. It's one of the reasons we can have as much debt as we have today and, and, um, and have politicians not feel like there's any limit to how much debt they can run up or how badly the, the budget can be uh, out of balance because there's been no consequence to that. So we have a central bank that is a bubble blowing, enabling monetary mechanism. And uh, the G7 central banks aren't that much different. So, you, so that is an unhealthy framework, though it does create a lot of equity, say wildness, which people appreciate. They don't like so much, it's like getting drunk. You know, people don't complain so much when they're drinking and getting, you know, all happy and high, but the next day they don't always feel so well. We haven't felt too much of the downside. I mean, you know, $8 trillion or $7 or $8 trillion of the federal debt is on the Fed's balance sheet. They still, you know, they're, they're, they're never going to get that down very far. So that's, a, that's, that, that, that's, that's an unhealthy environment. The other, the other development that is mandatory that people understand is the um, the power of the um, passive bid? What do I mean when I say that? I don't. Well, he's smarter than I am, but I'll start talk. I'll start talking instead. It, it doesn't look like many people are joining. I was, hey pilot, hey kitties, um, DB, Darren, Saber, Lee, Squire. Evening, Squire. Evening, Squire. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna come on just probably for an hour. Uh, the, my main two goals is to highlight, uh, and we can talk about whatever you want, but I want to highlight uh, again that. collectively over time, and we might not have as much time as we wish. I want everyone to start seeing the macro picture as well as these little stocks that we're talking about. So I just, I'll just talk about logic very quickly. I think there's a trade here. Now I know, I know I recommended it back before and it's just been this misery, but here we are. We this downtrend 
And remember, when I do charts, I do it very broad brush. I'm not a I'm not as good as any of those other guys. But anyway, we're breaking through this trend to the upside in my judgment. We've also popped above this resistance as of the last today, certainly, but maybe the last couple of days. And that's the um, uh, 20 day moving average. Sorry, it's the 50 day, the 50 day moving average. And we've been dancing around there for a little while. Oddly, on this same level is here. I think now that we're above the 50 day moving average, that becomes our support. But what's interesting is you could ask, are these resistance points? I don't really see it. I see this gap here where I drew the green circle as the next stop. These certainly could, you know, it could bounce there as it goes up. But I think this gap will get filled, and that's that green line. And that price is um, 15 cents, 15 cents a share. So it's trading at two and a half. And if I'm right that the gap gets filled, it'll go to 15 and a half cents. Now, don't chase this. Don't drive it up. Don't just panic into it. I would just come in and bid. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't, well, there'll be another trade. I wouldn't chase it up because I expect it to be volatile. It won't go straight up. Anyway, that's logic. And then uh, um, um, <laughs> this is, I know this is meant to, hmm. I know this, let's see. Okay, there it is. My uh, mouse isn't working. Oh, well, now it's still not working. It's a problem. I really need to, to give you a, okay, now it's connected. This, this guy here is here just to provoke me, I'm sure. But luckily, it's what I wanted to talk about. Now that is a donkey question. So I'm not going to answer it. Um, but I will answer for myself. I received let's see how I can do this. I don't really want to show I don't really want to show any information. But yesterday late, I received my next bridge shares from my IRA for a massive 1,264 shares. So when I combine it with my previous receipt, an equally astonishing massive 3,000 shares, you can see that I'm going to be the next Rockefeller. So my answer to Chima 308 is, what are you waiting for? If you're a real person, which I doubt you are. But if you, if, if you out there still are waiting, as this idiot is, for MMTLP to resolve itself, um, this person is in the habit of joining with the, he's the coward, joining with the shorts, and he's trying to get me upset, so then get a video, put it over on the Twitterati pages, and say that I ranted or something, I don't know. Um, but what's interesting for Chima 308, Chima 308, 
has the initiative to come on this line and act and do something to further or further, as they say in the South, his devious agenda. That's my opinion until I am proven differently. I'll stick by it, but if I'm wrong, I'll I'll apologize. It's hard to know. But it's such an idiot question. <laughs> He's got to be a fudster. Um, uh, the simple answer on MMTLP is you have the ability to solve it for yourself. You have the ability to solve it for yourself. You have the ability to not make it take so long. Why is MMTLP taking so long? You have the ability. I, I did it from E-Trade. I got all my shares registered at AST. So Chima 308, just to remind you, on December 8th, of 2022, that was the record date for a dividend if you bought MMTLP. Now, I bought my shares, and we can add it up. I bought my shares... Uh, 1264 plus 3005. I bought 400, 4269 at just under eight dollars. So I paid $34,000. Like, oh, there you are. I was hoping you'd stay asleep. Are you all right? You're okay? I was trying to get this video in before he woke up so that um, I could W-A-L-K him in about an hour. I hope he still gives me an hour. So anyway, Chema 308, I bought 4000 269 shares of MMTLP. I paid like $7.98, so I call it $8. I paid $34,000. <laughs> if I just listened to a friend of mine and purchased it two months earlier, I would have 20,000, 30,000 shares. But instead, like an idiot, I did it the last week. So, Chima, I could sit there and say, why is it taking so long? Whatever it is you have in mind and whatever you're, you're just going to let others do it. What I did is take Wall Street up on its promise on record date, record date, one share What Wall Street promised was for each share of MMTLP that I owned, I would get one share of NextBridge Hydrocarbons. That's what you're waiting for. That's all Wall Street has to do. That's it. It's all they have to do. Now, for the time being, let's leave aside some of the other issues, just to finish this point. Chima 308, all Wall Street owed you on December 8th with trading days of the 9th and the 12th. They owed you that too. They took that away. But all they really owed you on the 8th was one share of Nextbridge Hydrocarbons 
for every share of MMTLP. So Chima, instead of being a crybaby, instead of instead of being a victim, instead of saying, oh, when is everybody going to take care of MMTLP? Why is it taking so long? I haven't seen you in the halls of Congress. I took my shares out. I, I, all by my, all by my lonesome, I have received from Wall Street one share of NextBridge for every share of MMTLP. And I highly recommend Chima 308 that you initiate, if you really are a real person, that you initiate the transfer of your MMTLP from your brokerage firm to NextBridge Hydrocar, uh, to AST uh, in the form of NextBridge Hydrocarbons. That you can do. You don't have to wait for anybody. Now it takes, in my, in, in this last shares that I just um, received, the, the massive amount of 1,264 shares with a little slip, um, I initiated the transfer from my IRA to my regular account in January. And I believe, I have records, um, I believe I called in to Morgan Stanley E-Trade um, oh, half a dozen times in January slash February. But according to Morgan Stanley, their records show that this transfer was initiated on March 1st, March 1st of this year. And I received it yesterday. So Kima uh, 308, if you really wish, if you're a sincere uh, person, if you really wish that this MMTLP won't take very long, you better get started because March 1, April 1, plus uh, March, April, what's today, the 11th. So it took about 40, it took about 45 days for me to get my certificate. So, Kima, I think that you can stop waiting and stop asking others why is it taking so long and take personal initiative, just like you've taken personal initiative here today to help your cowardly friends cause a rise in me, you're hoping. Um, but if you are a real person, and for those who are real people out there, I highly recommend that you move your MMTLP to the transfer agent, which is called Quintera or something, AST. Get your next bridge hydrocarbon shares. I, it was odd, I noticed, on the shares I got here, that my certificate is in the numbered in the 3000 range so fewer than 4000 certificates have been issued obviously that doesn't talk that doesn't speak to how many shares but i think came a 308 i think there's plenty of shares left because of the inertia, for some reason, of the 65,000 people who own, reportedly own NextBrit and own MMTLP, are failing to transfer their shares to AST, failing to transfer, failing to request that I want my MMTLP in 
next bridge, hydrocarbons. So Kima, the, the number one reason it's taking so long is because you're not doing anything. <laughs> if you do something, you can solve it for yourself. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to spend time on this part of this subject, but Kima, you one could argue One could argue that Wall Street owed you, Kima, because you're such a caring person, that the record date of the 8th, Wall Street owed you, because it was T plus 2 at the time, settlement would have been the 12th, T plus 2, that Wall Street owed you trading on the 9th and the 12th to close your position. And one would suspect that you could have made a ton of money in a trade. Now, Wall Street, your friends, Kima, they, your friends, counterfeit shares, sell stock that doesn't exist, and these cowards and opportunists and criminals take advantage of the basic law of supply and demand. More supply, lower prices. More demand, ceteris paribus, higher prices. All things being equal, if you add more supply, the price goes down. All things being equal, if you add more demand, the price go goes up. You and your buddies criminally take advantage of a somnolent regulatory system at best, a complicit regulatory system at worst, working in conjunction with big, massive pools of money. It's in the other room. Run by plunderers with names like Fink and Cohen and uh, Griffin, plunderers. So what you do, you do, and your friends do, they massively increase supply with counterfeit shares, driving prices down. But when you get trapped, you and your kind gets trapped, you get lawyers who say, wait a minute, those were just speculators. They just were trying to get take advantage of a squeeze. Well, wait a minute. You all took advantage of massive increases in supply for years. First in Torchlight, then in MMAT, and then when you got trapped in MMTLP. And you didn't mind the blessings of destroying a company and shareholders by supply and demand. But then all of a sudden, you call up NASDAQ and you say, and, and then I also think the, the broker dealers called up NASDAQ and said, we can't handle this. But your side, the criminal side, the banking side, took away these two trading days because they said retail doesn't deserve to benefit from the imbalance in supply and demand, which is an economic law, fundamental. So the system took away from those of us who believed that that massive teeter-totter with, with supply on one side once you knocked that kid off the teeter totter, the other side would hit, would tip up and and hit the ground, and we could make money as prices went up. And in fact, Kima, it looks like your friends. Uh, now I didn't see. I saw on Twitter some of this. I didn't see the where it came from, 
but I saw prices and heard of prices on the ninth buying back stock at those levels. Now, by canceling, by I'm not sure how they canceled these trades. I'm not sure. If I were a lawyer, I'd go after that. I don't think you can cancel them. But on the ninth, Jessica Hopper, we believe, stopped trading for her friends. And now she's got a posh job. So we didn't get those days of trading, Kima. So if your very thoughtful question is, why is it taking so long to get a reward <clears throat> or are just desserts for the two days of trading, which could have been a short squeeze, that's a whole different question. Now, that, I think, is going to go down two paths. One, you're going to get people going to Congress and posing with famous people um, and then putting it up on Twitter and, and uh, you know. And on the other hand, you're going to have dedicated, quiet, hardworking people behind the scenes not calling a lot of attention to themselves. And the combined efforts of dozens, hundreds of people and a couple of people that get out, out, out in front and get a lot of attention. And you need both. You need the people that pull the cameras, uh, cause the drama, but you also need the people that work hard and constantly. So in terms of getting those two, the, the value of those two days trading, one, you've got to define what it was worth. And two, you've got to find who was at fault. And three, you've got to go after the deep pockets. Now, the two avenues currently being pursued are Congress and journalism, public, public policy, and on the other hand, the courts. Now, Kima, I, I, I can't answer you. Why do court systems take so long? Why does Congress take so long? I would, and why are journalists so incurious? I would argue that on the public side, that there's a lot of bribery that goes on. Bribery from the, the big pools of money who are behind the counterfeiting of shares in the US markets. Our own funds are behind the destruction of your investments in the stock market. Oddly, if you put your money in their fund, you benefit somewhat from it. They'll make sure you get 8% while they'll reap 30, 40% on OPM. So it's a nice business if you can get it. So, on the public side, I, I, I think it's delayed by bribery. I also think it's delayed by indifference. I think it's delayed by uh, uh, a hope that as time goes by, the cost won't be very much. On the, on the legal side, the court system side, Kima, I don't know. Why do courts take so long? I think they take so long so passions can be cooled, facts can be entered into evidence, awarenesses can be reached, and finally, a settlement can be achieved in the middle, which both sides are unhappy with. And it never actually, justice is ever resolved. So Kima, if that's your question, that's, that's, I'm sure you could have college courses explaining how uh, Larry Fink or, or Mar types like that. I, I have no knowledge of whether he does it specifically or a Ken Griffin or a, uh, a Stevie Cohen. There's a book out on Cohen, which comes closer. There's a bit of a book out on 
Griffin. But just in theory, how big pools of money bribe and buy Congress? It could take forever to answer that question. On the legal side, I'm not a lawyer. But my guess is, Kima, if you're waiting for some magical uh, reimbursement for a non-existent short squeeze, you're gonna you're gonna get old waiting for a settlement. That doesn't mean there won't be a settlement. That doesn't mean there isn't pain and suffering. That doesn't mean there hasn't been harm to investors. That doesn't mean that your brokerage firm and Wall Street is not culpable. And it doesn't mean they're not on the hook for pain and suffering, for violating the rules, all of that. But that's going to take time. But Kima, if you are truly a human being and you really care uh, about resolving MMTLP, take care of it in your own life. Just focus on yourself. Send in a request and get your shares of MMTLP transferred into NextBridge. Now, I wanted to, um, the reason I answered that, I want to show you guys, and I want to get feedback from you on what is the value of NextBridge. What is the value of NextBridge? Now, there's a lot of data out there. There's press releases. There's a lot of stuff on Twitter. And there's a lot of videos. I've made some videos. But for purposes of this discussion right now, I just want to focus on one thing. One thing. I want to show, go through the Torchlight Energy Investment Investor presentation dated March 2020. Now, I invested in Torchlight to my memory uh, a decade earlier. I could be wrong because, you know, my Joe Biden brain or, you know, my memory's off. Maybe it was six years earlier. But I bought tor tor Torchlight in the open market. I bought a lot of it and I lost money on it. And I moved that money to a different investment. And so I didn't get MMTLP shares for free, which I wish, wish I had waited for. Anyway, what does it say right on the top of that? Largest domestic onshore new field discovery in over 30 years. Largest U.S. onshore new field discovery in our life in our adult lifetimes probably since prudhoe bay i'm guessing and i can't think of another place now you can say well how do you define a new field and and i would say good question because you know the Marcellus and the Utica and and the Eagleford were all big, are big plays, but I don't think they're comparing it to that. There's a lot of forward-looking statements, so risk. Everything we say is risk. It's a it's a discussion, not a promise. But here's the highlights. Here's the investment highlights of Torchlight Energy. Now, Torchlight went public, and Kima's friends counterfeited shares in Torchlight, destroyed the stock price, made it impossible for Torchlight to develop this project. But that's, that's the state of our markets now. Um, the markets in the United States are there for the plunderers, the plunderers the Larry Finks, the Stevie Cohens, the Ken Griffins in in concept. I, I can't, I don't know anything about each of them, but they run trillions of dollars. And it's our funds 
that are own the regulatory system, own Congress, own the Democratic Party, and most of the Republican Party. Most most of uh, multifamily real estate is their goal. Uh, they 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 want you to be poor, and their half a percent wealthy beyond uh, beyond dreams. And you know what? I hope it's worth it. No matter how young they are, they've only got a finite time on this planet. And I hope it's worth it, that greed, that level of greed. I hope it's worth it when they get up upstairs. All right, so Torchlight had investment highlights. Torchlight strategy, which has become NextBridges, is to execute within the Permian Basin and to swiftly and confidently create shareholder value through the development of its assets. The company has entered the Permian Basin at a, attractive valuations and is continually seeking to expand its acreage position. Okay, <clears throat> they have some <coughs> diversification. I'm going to ignore that. Because to my knowledge, they sold or tried to sell. Anyway, the other two projects aren't that significant. Um, Torchlight expected to drill and complete six gross wells uh, in 2020. But you know, before the before the people Kima works with, just obliterated the stock price. Also, during uh, COVID, oil went under a dollar, under zero. <laughs> zero. You could buy oil for less than zero. And then they talk about the leadership team. Okay. Here's Texas. Texas. You see Texas? These are the other two projects they have. I'm going to ignore those. We're talking about the Aura Grande right here. That's the focus of NextBridge. Okay. There's a typo here. But the Aura Grande project is 134,000 acres. It, they have some partners. And, and here's where the typo is. Uh, at the time, it talks about shares outstanding. Anyway, we don't care about all that right now. Um, unbelievable. They... Uh, Kima 308's colleagues and compatriots got Torchlight down in the 52-week period from $2 to $0.50. Cents. Good work, Kima. So anyway, the here on this, here on this uh, presentation, Aura Grande consisted of 134,000 acres. Management team, John Berta, you've heard of him a CFO, but then the consulting geologist is Rich Masterson. Rich Masterson originated the Hudspeth County Aura Grande project, the one we're in, as well as the Wolf Bain unconventional play in the Delaware Basin. He worked with or his projects were developed by many companies. Some of the names are Eagle Oil and Gas, Rosetta, Devon, Browning Oil, Oxy, J. Cleo Thompson, Noble, Petroleum, Samson, Pedra, Brigham, uh, Atlantic, and, and others. 
and he's created many prospects and discoveries, which resulted in discoveries throughout the Permian Basin at all, le all depths, shallow and deep. Since he began his career in 1974, he started with Texaco. He holds a Bachelor of Arts in Geology from Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas, and is a member of the West Texas Geological Society. Rich McCabe is the originator of the Oro Grande project. Then they describe Gregory McCabe. Currently, he was the chairman of the board of Torchlight, and currently, on my recently received certificate, he signed it. He's president and chief executive officer of NextBridge Holding. Well, who is Greg McKay? He's an experienced geologist who brings over 32 years. And this was in 2020. So now he's an old man like I am. <laughs> Just kidding. He's I, He doesn't get any older, but um, uh, he must be, uh, if, he, if he's got 32 years and you add four more years, he's got 36 years of oil and gas experience. Uh, he owns McCabe Petroleum, Mannix Royalty, Masterson Royalty, G Mac Exploration. He's been involved in numerous oil and gas ventures throughout his career and brings experience in technical evaluation, operations, acquisitions, and divestures. What happens in oil and gas? You acquire an asset and then you focus on an area. You sell the non-core assets, constantly trying to upgrade and concentrate where your skill is, where your focus is, upgrade your core assets. And he's good at that. McC Greg McCabe is Torchlight's largest shareholder and has provided entry for the company into its two largest assets, the Hazel and the Oro Grande. I, be I believe the Hazel may have been sold I just don't want to focus on it because it's not what I, I'm just only going to talk about the York Grande here. I'm, I'm open to any feedback. Um, Michael Graves, actually, I know Michael Graves. I think he had a consulting firm or a, anyway, on one of the projects I funded, I believe we engaged him. Anyway, he's a director, CPA. Uh, I could be wrong, might be a different Graves. Uh, Robert Lance Cook, Alexander Zin Zinniger, Michael Zebrowski, Daniel Zebrowski, Michael Mullen. Okay. Now, as uh, Gus, not Gus Fliakos, as um, um, oh, God, my brain. Anyway, the oil and gas analyst at um, uh, Oppenheimer, and his name is, he's a great guy. Uh, he is one of top analysts, and I, his name is, I'll think of it. He would open some of his presentations across the squawk box by saying, first there were the dinosaurs. So first there were the dinosaurs. This is Texas. That's New Mexico. That's New Mexico. This is the panhandle. This is Texas. That's Mexico. So here's the Permian Basin. You see? Essentially, this is what they refer to as the Permian Basin. You've got the Midland Basin, the Delaware Basin, and over here, the Oro Grande Basin. Well, what's the difference between that and that? Or that and that? 
This is where Pioneer just got sold to, if I'm correct I, by my memory, that Pioneer just got sold to uh, Exxon at $30 a barrel of oil, proven. The only difference is infrastructure, and it took a while to develop all this, and now they're, they've stepped out here. Kima 308's friends didn't want this energy developed for the United States of America. They thought the best thing was to counterfeit and short, tor short torchlight shares into oblivion, wiping out a team of oil and gas uh, professionals so that this project didn't get developed. So guys like Kima could hit and run for $500 a day and be proud of himself. Well, what do you notice about that? That's the Permian time frame. Does anything that Kima and his associates do affect when the oil was created in this zone? This is the part of Texas. Well, actually, it's the Eagleford. And I, I, I can't draw them. I, anyway, Texas won World War II, built buildings in New York City, built fortunes, and continues to power the, the industrial might of the United States. The only difference is Torchlight, a decade or so ago, tried to create wealth here, and Kima and his cowardly friends decided, hey, we should destroy it. The good news, though, is whatever they do above ground doesn't change what's there. That's why I'm spending so much time on this. If the oil was there, it's been there for millions of years. And whatever Kima and his buddies do doesn't erase that fact. This basin, this basin, this is the central basin uplift, but all of this, I can't move my finger properly, has produced a ton of oil. And now we're going over here to the Oro Grande. And whatever Kima and his friends do isn't going to change that fact, Jack. Okay. Torchlight's energy resources in the Oro Grande Basin. Low case, 2.3 billion barrels. Medium case, 3.7 billion barrels. High side case, 5.0 billion barrels of oil. This is in 2020. This is under torchlight. Low side, 2.3 billion barrels. Right down the middle, 3.7 billion barrels. And high side, 5 billion barrels of oil. This is on 134,000 acres leased. It's a third party valuation from a group called Stimulation Petrophysic Physicists. And the Heading says this, very large upside in potential hydrocarbon resource, here's the key word, recoverable, recoverable. So I'll show it to you again. Let me highlight that recoverable so you see it. Third party. So recoverable, third party, low side, 2 billion, 
median 4 billion, high 5 billion. To get the exact numbers, 2.3, 3.7, and 5.0. They've drilled, at that time, they had drilled pilot wells. It looks like three. Anyway, they, they talk about how much oil is recoverable from each well, and I don't want to, that's, that's too much information, and it's out of date. Okay, so this is the system, and I, I think it's called an ICO pack map. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, there's where they drilled their wells, and over here, you can see that at that time, they had a 72.5% working interest. Well, since Kima and his buddies shorted Torchlight, um, Greg McKay and Nextbridge have increased their working interest to 100%. That's a real vote of confidence. And they put money up to do so. Okay, the target bench characteristics. A bench refers to basically layers. It's because it's on a slant, I guess they call it benches, or I, I don't know why they use the word bench. But it's if you think of a wedding cake and the oils where the icing is, that bench is where the icing is. As you drill through the rocks, there's a bench. Um, uh, or a reservoir of oil. Um, they have oil and gas confirmed. The pay zone depths, it says here, from 3,000 feet to 7,500 feet, with the primary pay in the 5,000s. They talk about four to six benches. So it's four to six different Permian Sorry, four to six zones in the upper pen, upper pen Sylvanian formation. So the potential is 3.7 billion barrel recoverable, including the Wolf Camp, Upper Pen, Barnett, and Woodford unconventional zones. That's right there. It's right here. This is another one of those maps showing the thickness, showing uh, uh, four to six. Individual perspective, I like the word zones better. They have four to six individual perspective zones and uh, they're very thick. All right, here is the comparison of the Ora Grande to other projects that have, re at least on the face of it, revolutionized the American energy markets. This is comparing the Ora Grande to the Midland Basin, which, if you go back to the map of Texas. Everything is big in Texas. This is the Oro Grande. This is the Midland Basin. The dinosaurs didn't recognize the boundary between New Mexico and Texas. Okay. It's shallow depth in the Oro Grande, less than 6,200 feet. The Midland, as a comparable, you had to drill to 7,800, between 7,800 feet and 9,000 feet. It's more expensive. Thickness of the reservoir at the Oro Grande, 700 feet 
thickness of the reservoir at Midland, in the Midland Basin, 300 to 700 feet. Okay, mud log, blah, blah. I'm not going to be able to explain it to you anyway. Uh, oil cuts, porosity. There's two measures in oil and gas, porosity and permeability. You know what they mean <clears throat> if you think about it. But the porosity in the <clears throat> Aura Grande ranges from 4.5% to 9%. In the Midland Basin, it ranges from 3.5% to 8%. So it's better in the Aura Grande. Permeability is the same. Resistivities, brittleness. The, the clay, the low clay is important because clay clogs up everything when you get water with it. And also, nothing flows through clay. Um, in the Aura Grande, the clay is 12% to 27%, but in Midland, it's worse. It's 15 to 46%. And it talks about silica, that's about the same. Uh, thin carbonates, which are, are areas where you can find oil. It, it looks like it's all about the same. Calcite, cement. Uh, TOC, I think, is total oil content. And I don't know how to make that relevant. I really don't. Um, a bunch of stuff here. The last several things, I have no idea how to make it make sense to you. But the major point of this is on several uh, metrics that make a project economically successful, the Aura Grande is the same as or better than Midland where fortunes have been made. Okay, the, I'm going to skip I'm going to skip the hazel. They have a bunch of offset operators. You know, it's important for you to know when when you sit there thinking, "Oh, I lost all my money." The offset operators, again, dinosaurs don't know where a county line is. They don't know where a state line is. They don't know from one gas station to the next gas station. And they really don't know which oil well is coming down into the ground. So when, you, you're, when you're surrounded by other operators, they're coming down into the same projects. It's a confidence builder for your own play. And these are blanket sands generally. So anyway, they have Hunt Oil, Devon, Oxy, Banner Resources, Compass, uh, Independence. My eyesight won't allow me to read the rest of them. I can't, I can't make it out. Here's the Winker Prospect project. I don't want to really get into it because I, I don't think it's relevant. But look at here. This is what happens. You get a zone and another zone, another zone and another zone. You drill horizontally. Here it is. You're drilling horizontally, and then you frack it. But there's multi layers of zones. Those are the benches. And these are the upper bone spring, the lower bone spring, Wolf Camp A and Wolf Camp B. But these run throughout Texas. The Winkler project, we're going to skip it. We're going to skip it. Okay. There's a major disconnect. Incredible upside. Let's talk about a little bit of that. And I'm going to just focus on Aura Grande. Um, the market cap of the company at that time was $55 million, thanks to Kima 308 and his buddies. 
I would let's figure out what the market let's ignore debt. Let's ignore debt. Let's just ignore debt. What's the market cap now? There's 256 million shares out. And he just acquired, and I'm I'm not gonna read it right now. We'll I'll do it on another call. But he just sold to Nextbridge or acquired some projects in Louisiana. And to my memory, they crossed the shares on those projects at around $2.50 a share. Most of you paid less than $2.50 for your shares. The stock closed at what? $3 uh, on that last day, three something or just under three. I'm just, since there was, to my memory, a transaction that just occurred at $2.50 a share, I'm going to use that because I don't know. One number is as good as another. So the market cap, the market cap, and this is a wild ass guess. The market cap of Nextbridge right now is $640 million. If you assume 256 million shares outstanding and you use what my memory tells me was a $2.50 valuation at per, uh, per share in the most recent transaction, they use shares to buy uh, interest in Louisiana. Now, this number might be low just because there were other things involved in that transaction. I paid $8. I certainly think this is a ridiculously low number, but let's just have a starting point. So the, the let's call it 600 million. We'll even go lower just so I can remember it. 600 million is the market cap, extent, you know, as a starting place. Well, the market cap of Torchlight was 55 million at the time of this writing. That is attributable to short selling by Kima's friends. It has nothing to do. It it I can't. Uh, Gate Fidel Gate Fidel Gate is the analyst's name. Like Fidel said, first there were the dinosaurs. What? Kima and his little criminal friends do doesn't change the volumes of oil in the deposited during the Permian geologic time in the Midland, in the Delaware, and now uh, we believe in the Oro Grande. So this this um i lost my well here where is it i lost it there it is sorry i i'm so disorganized so according to this, at the time this presentation was created, because the market price of Torchlight had been destroyed in collusion, illegally, criminally, um, the market cap was only 55 million. Using very low numbers, I think uh, the market cap now of... Uh, Next bridge might be six hundred million dollars. Now that at the time the price that they paid per acre was five hundred and fifty dollars per acre. It says here this is an unheard of price in the Permian. Permian acreage sold for twenty thousand, twenty five thousand, thirty thousand, and sometimes higher per acre. This is $500 per acre. So in the Oro Grande, here they talk about 96,000 net acres, 
Remember, um, uh, McCabe increased the ownership to 100% working interest. So the number, you still, you still have to do a net calculation for whatever the burden is. I don't know what the burden is. Could be an eighth. It's probably more than an eighth because because you've got to give some to the geologists. I'm sure Masterson has some, but I don't know what it is. Twenty percent total, eight, seventeen percent. But the working interest is a hundred percent of one hundred thirty four thousand acres. Now, um, I don't know what the net acreage would be. Because I don't know the I don't know the uh, royalties and the and the, the burden, what they have to pay back to the landowners. Okay, so Ora Grande's upside, ninety six thousand acres. I think it's probably now more like a hundred to maybe a hundred and ten thousand net. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let's just it doesn't matter. The pen section is 600 to 800 feet thick, which is massive, massive. It would require at least two or three bench laterals. Remember that picture I showed you of the winker? These are, these are the benches. They divide the thickness into benches which is where you can run a horizontal well and then frack it, explode into the rock in all directions without cannibalizing the bench below it or the bench above, above it. That would define the width of each bench. So here they think they have two or three benches, much like in this picture. They have four. So they also have a, a newly discovered shallow section, deep conventional plays, and that's important. A conventional play is one you go down vertically, you do a little cleanup, and the well flows. That's the that that's heaven compared to horizontal drilling. Um, okay, I like this calculation. Let me let me highlight it so you see that I'm not making it up. I'm going to highlight the highest one because it makes my point. To acquire that acreage now in the Ora Grande, this is in 2020, and these numbers are low in comparison to the Permian. At $1,000 an acre, it would equate to a $100 million market cap. At 2,500 an acre, it equate to a $250 million market cap. Just the acreage valuation. At 7,500 an acre, it would equate to 720 million. Obviously, if you use $10,000, it would equate to a billion dollar market cap. Well, why am I trying to focus on that? I just gave you a number based on $2.50 a share and the outstanding shares of Torchlight, of, of, of uh, Nextbridge, of around $600 million market cap. Just the acreage alone is worth more than that number. In other words, you're concerned, I lost my money, I don't have anything. Why is MMTLP taking so long? If you move your MMTLP
into NextBridge shares, just the value of the acreage is probably worth $4 a share or more. Using this analysis, it's worth about $3 a share. Well, that's not zero. That's just the value of the acreage before they, remember, they only had drilled two or three wells at this point. I think they've drilled 15 now, and they have some production. All right, so that's that's the presentation. Now, I quickly want to I quickly want to just run a couple of calculations, and then you can tell me where I'm wrong and why I'm in why I'm an idiot. Why I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. The companies, there's one page I didn't read to you. The company's high potential asset base the, is core assets located in the Ora Grande. They're going to drill in the wolf camp A, B, C, the upper and lower second bone spring, the third bone spring, and the Pennsylvanian in the Ora Grande. And I think they found one more. I just want to find that spread I showed you. Here it is. Here's the low side. Recoverable, low side recoverable, 2.3, 3.7, and 5. That's recoverable. Okay, let's just use the low side, 2.3 billion barrels. This I'm only going to make one calculation, and then I'll read your questions. 2.3 billion barrels. It's the low side. Recoverable, so that would um, be proven in my assumption after they've spent money to develop and to upgrade these prospects, show the industry that what the geologist thinks is there, what their seismic thinks is there, what this horrible term closology would indicate is there. And the 15 or 20 wells they've drilled shows is there and the extra bench they found and the shallow production, which I don't believe was included in this calculation. Let's just go with the low number, but let's assume at the time of a sale, this number would be agreed as proven, as proven oil and gas, possibly proven producing. But let's just say it's, yeah, let's say it's the highest level of reserves. Now, a couple of months ago, Exxon bought Pioneer for basically $30, 2980 or something, uh, according to my arithmetic. Uh, per barrel of proved reserves. So let's use $30 as what Exxon paid. Let's not use that number. Let's use, um, uh, let, let's use $21 paid for this, for this. Why am I using, I didn't really want to use 20. It's too cute. I'd rather use 25 or something, but I'll just use 21, which is slightly more than two thirds of the price Exxon paid for Pioneer. Because in my example, I'm assuming that Nextbridge would be sold or you'd have a JV after they prove up 
to the satisfaction of the industry, the low side case of 2.3 billion. So taking 2.3 billion times 21, $21 per barrel. gives you $48 billion. $48 billion. Now, I want to be clear to Kima 308. This is not inclusive of pain and suffering. This is not inclusive of penalties for breaking the law. And this is not inclusive of other values that I personally believe when uh, Nextbridge goes to negotiate with your side of the table, they should start at a number well over $1,000 a share. But the purpose of this calculation is to try to come up with kind of a baseline number that, that is very hard to argue with. Now, they had drilled three wells when they came up with recoverable reserves low side at 2.3 billion barrels. Now, it says potential because they need to Drill. Well, they've drilled something like 15 to 20 wells since then, and maybe more. <coughs> they've acquired more of the project, which shows their confidence. So anyway, I'm using the low side case. I'm using $21 a barrel, and it's $48 billion. Now the question comes. In a settlement calculation or in what they owe us calculation, I think they owe us one share of Nextbridge for one share of uh, MMTLP, but they owe the Nextbridge in a non diluted way versus 165 million or so shares at that time. It, it gets too complicated. You need a forensic accounting to figure that out. So the number to use now would be the outstanding shares of 256 million. 256 million is the outstanding shares. But guess what? I'm going to use the number 500 million, which is all of the authorized shares. I'm just going to use all of that as my number. All right, that pen doesn't work. So you're going to have a monochrome example. Okay, so Kima, Kima 308, let's just review. From the presentation of Torchlight from early, well, from four years ago, four years ago, when your friends had destroyed Torchlight by counterfeiting shares and selling shares that didn't exist, the presentation of the Oro Grande from a third-party analysis, uh, stimulation petrophysics physicists uh, using the low side of 2.3 billion. What was the high side, Kima? The high side was 5 billion. 5 billion. I'm using the low side. Um, 
Exxon, when oil was 60 some dollars a barrel, Exxon purchased uh, Pioneer at about $30 a barrel for proof reserves. Well, now oil is over $80 and headed higher, it looks like. Several major acquisitions have occurred. Instead of using $30, I'm using $21 for proven reserves because I'm assuming this will happen after they prove up reserves. Now, remember, they have announced they found another bench. They've announced they did uh, shallow drilling, and they also got into some other projects, any one of which could be a company maker, although I'm a little confused of the breakout of the deals. But those southern Louisiana prospects can be huge with a capital H. So I'm using, I'm using the low case. I'm using $21 a barrel, not 30. It should be higher than 30 now, I think, because oil prices have gone up. And instead of dividing by the, uh, the outstanding shares, I'm dividing by the authorized shares, KEMA 308. Uh, so what is the number per share, the value? And I think I did everything I could do to be conservative. I didn't know this would come out this way. The value is $96 a share. <coughs> so Kima, why is MMTLP taking so long? My question to you is why are you sitting on your rear end? Go get Go transfer your shares of MMTLP into shares of NextBridge. In my judgment, by one calculation, by taking the lowest number, by taking a sort of a middle of the pack number for for an oil price and an acquisition and by using the maximum number of shares authorized, I come up with a per share value of roughly $100 a share. And so you're gonna actually sit there, you're a go-getter, you're a person who comes on my call, I think probably to provoke me, but maybe you're coming on because you legitimately own MMTLP and you're taking the time to do that action, call up your brokerage firm and get your stock. It's worth $100 a share right now. It's worth, conceptually, on paper, $100 a share right now. Now, you want to haircut that. You want to say, ah, you don't know that. Ah, cut it. Cut it. Tell me it's worth $25 a share, but you're sitting on your room, boomkus, rumpkus, and doing nothing? Take care of your own MMTLP situation. Get your stock. All right, I'm done with that disquisition, and now I'll answer questions. And I will tell you guys, if I had a good computer, and if I were as skilled at editing like Kristen Shaughnessy or, or you know, Avid or, or uh, Ace or anybody other than me, I would take that little bit I did on, on uh, NextBridge and make it a separate video. So anyway, I'm going to go to questions and I'm going to go to the bottom first. And I'll try to get all the way back up to the top. Just to review, um, the first thing I pointed out is I think there's a trade in logic from two and a half cents to 15 cents. Take it for what it's worth. I showed you the chart. And on MMTLP NextBridge, I was successful in getting my shares 
out of E-Trade, even though I, I thought they were giving me the runaround, I noticed there's fewer than 4,000 certificates issued. That doesn't say how many shares, of course. So it's my opinion there's plenty of room for guys like Kima to take control of their own situation, for you to take con control of your own situation and ask your brokerage firm to send your shares of next bridge hydrocarbons that you're entitled to, to you and register them at the transfer agent. I just ran through what I think is an exceedingly conservative calculation based on a presentation made four years ago by Torchlight Energy before uh, uh, drilling 20-some wells, before finding the extra bench, before actually having some production, before adding some of the other projects. And it looks like it's worth $100 a share in the worst case scenario. In the worst case scenario. So move your MMTLP to the transfer agent is my strongest urging. Uh, there may be reasons that I can't think of that it's beneficial to leave it at the brokerage firm, but like I say, I can't think of. Uh, and then finally, Kima, you go tell your boys, mostly boys, I doubt there's a girl doing it, but there might be, uh, who are short MMTLP and they're trapped like a rat in a rat trap. My my basic calculation is a hundred dollars a share. And if you all are short five hundred million shares, enjoy it. Enjoy your life, financial life, financial life while it lasts. All right. Uh, time for a trip to the bunny ranch. Which one, Juan? Which one should I go to, Juan? Um, look, uh, that that's a huge segue. Um, I think in the gold and silver area, my thoughts on it. Uh, I got several years ago. I got an investor who I care for very deeply into a gold company because I had spent at least fifteen years studying peak oil, uh, the financial system, and gold and silver, and the markets. Uh, doesn't mean I was right, obviously, uh, because I was early. I thought that, and it looks like we had a chance to sell out of GTII and Finger about a year and a half ago. I didn't realize that at the time. All we were going to get was eight bucks or nine bucks or seven or six. Um, but I still think there's room for a massive upside in if we catch one of these short squeezes. However, the other side is practiced at the art of deception. Practice at the arts of destroying market caps. And they're not as scared of stock prices go up. It doesn't stop them. They keep selling. So we have to face that fact that maybe there's not going to be enough time to make a pot of money in those shares before we have to buy gold and silver. and. Greg, I've started talking over the last few weeks, months, sort of the end of last year, about gold and silver. 
And I absolutely believe everybody should own gold and silver. Now, let me give you a caveat on that. It's in the headlines everywhere now. When I used to talk to, about it, people go, what are you talking about? Now it's everywhere. You can't pick up a newspaper. You can't listen to a podcast. You can't go into Costco without hearing about gold. That's usually a bad sign. That usually means that the sucker, and if you don't know who the sucker is, it's you or me. It usually means the sucker is about to be blindsided. Um, but having said that, uh, I think the the good aspect of it, it's imprinting on your brain that you need to look at gold and silver. The most manipulated uh, asset in the world which has not made highs in its price in dollar terms is silver. Every, everything else is in a bubble. I don't think gold's in a bubble, but gold's making new highs priced in dollars. Commercial real estate Multifamily loan uh, homes, uh, you know, Larry Fink, I think he's Blackstone or BlackRock or whatever. They're buying them up. I think it, he's the one. I don't know. Whoever it is. They're all, the, they're all interchangeable guys. Um, uh, re, uh, residential real estate, I think, is at a peak. However, assets... If we get into hyperinflation, which is a very, is a real possibility, it doesn't matter if you overpaid for your house. If the dollar, if you need a wheelbarrow full of dollars to buy a loaf of bread, like they did in the Weimar Republic at the end. So it's it's tricky judging inflation in dollar terms because you're making a basic presumption that the dollar has value. I think the dollar still has value because a lot of our policies are self-inflicted wounds and we can change them. I think we're going to go to war to protect the dollar. The dollar still is the only currency worldwide that has a market to back it up, however fraudulent. BRICs don't have a market. They don't have a central bank. Uh, they don't have a deep bond market. They don't have a Congress that can help them out. They don't have any of that yet. They will. They just don't have it yet. People are starting to trust China and Russia more than they trust the United States. But I don't think it's completely gotten there yet. So I think we still have some time. But Greg, I think you should own gold and silver. And of the two, I would buy silver. I'm mad I haven't been able to do it for, for myself. Uh, I do own silver. I don't own, I don't really own any gold. I own uh, three, I'm an investor in three mining companies, and that gives me exposure mostly to gold, but to quite a bit of silver. One of the companies, actually all three of the companies have been destroyed by that gentleman's friends who short stocks. But I think the mining companies will be... Okay, I think you're going to make gold right now is just over two twenty three hundred dollars an ounce. I think gold's going to forty grand for sure, and it might go to a hundred grand an ounce. Remember, Greg, at some point 
measuring gold and silver in dollar terms becomes meaningless. Because as the dollar plummets, like the Zimbabwe rupee or whatever it was called, it, it becomes a meaningless comparison. But for now, it has some. The dollar is the cleanest, dirty shirt. Although I would argue, uh, if I had to place bets on the currency to be in, across the world, if you had to be in a paper currency, if I, if I just had to pick one right now, I'd say the ruble. They have energy. They have a president that looks out for Russia. They've returned to God in many, at least they allow, uh, the, the churches are open. Maybe it's not a, uh, you know, it's not everybody, but they have a pretty darn good journalism and press. Um, they ha now have a very strong military and they have productive capacity, and they have more res resources than any country in the world, and their population is uh, probably the highest or amongst the highest educated in the world. <coughs> I would buy the ruble, but I'm sure there's others out there that make sense. Um, uh, for now, the dollar has not lost its ability to be a store of value, but it, there'll come a time. So my point is, Greg, at four, $40,000 an ounce, let me give you, let me give you um, my memory of uh, Jim Rickard's Point of view. I'm not speaking for him, but it's my memory. He believes that by gold, by repricing gold all at once to $10,000 an ounce, the United States could reset its fiscal system. It could reset our finances, our debt compared to gold. Now, he makes the assumption, Greg, that we still have our gold at Fort Knox. I don't think it's true. I, I, I don't think we have our gold. But I don't know. And guess what? No one's ever going to know. We're never going to let anybody other than Rachel Maddow or, or, uh, or uh, you know, some other paid, bought and paid for person to go look. We're never going to let anybody confirm whether we have the 8,000 tons, is that what it is, of, of gold. We're not going to do it. So it doesn't matter if it's there or not. It's kind of like the counterfeit shares of, of, uh, finger in your account. No one's no one, no one from the police is going to look. <laughs> no one's going to look whether we have our gold or not. So what what Jim Rickards believes is we could reset our financial. And I'm using my own words, not his. He explains it much better than I do. Uh, our own financial health at $10,000 an ounce. And he believes at some point there will be an overnight reset of the price of gold in U.S. dollar terms at $10,000 an ounce. I think it's going to $40,000, and I think it could go as, as high as $100,000 an ounce. That's gold. Silver is highly volatile, highly manipulated, manipulated. JP Morgan, uh, Blythe Masters. Uh, it's it's hypothecated and rehypothecated. 
and there's cowboys on Wall Street that sell silverware that doesn't exist. They sell the entire production of the world <laughs> in just a few trades. Derivatives. Remember Bill Clinton and uh, the Graham Bliley Leach Act. No oversight on derivatives. So, so. Um, I think so silver is a coiled spring. It's highly manipulated. And I'm going to miss it probably. It's going to run right now. But I have a feeling at some point they're going to press it back down. It'll be down 20%, 30%. So I, I think you can wait until then. My opinion, Greg, silver is going to trade at par at as gold. And you're going to look at me and say I should I should join the choir invisible. That's what I think. I think in a mania, in a panic, in a spike, silver will trade one for one for gold. I'd rather own silver than gold. I'd rather own silver than gold. And I have a project here which it's it's over there. I, I did a bit on my video before on it. Um, I'm raising money for a it's 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 technically a public company, but it doesn't trade. So it's it's for all practical purposes a private company. And uh, they're seeking funding, and I, I, this is not a solicitation for money. If you have interest, I'll put you in touch with the company and get you'll have to get the materials directly from them. But I can reserve a certain amount, I think. And Greg, I'll tell you what it is. I are, I'm invested in this company. I think I put a quarter of a million in this company. If I'm wrong, and I'm not too far wrong. And, and then, anyway, I got a lot of money in these three companies. This is a gold company in Nevada, Greg. It is nano gold, which is the same as the gold, um, uh, Barrick gold and Newmont gold produced currently out of Nevada in these huge uh, submarine-sized uh, pressure cookers, basically autoclaves but the difference here is it's it's also highly refractory it's it and i'm not a geologist but it's it's on the cal, caldera uh well it's on the edge of a caldera of a volcano and and so the heat uh also sealed the nano gold in the it's like an m&m when you stick it in your mouth the the chocolate the, the candy melts and then you get the chocolate inside. It's a little bit like that, but it's nano gold. It's so tiny. It's much smaller than the width of your hair. But over the last almost 20 years, uh, a lot of wealthy investors put up about $70 million in the project. And, you know, they built a plan out there and they they dug up the the resources the the it's sand and they dug deep they had independent analysis and for the last since i invested which was oh my gosh 15 years ago <laughs> time flies 15 years ago but i've invested in three different tranches of it at much higher prices, much higher valuations than what's being offered now. Um, the amount of gold by an independent analysis is, I'm gonna use round figure, six million ounces of gold. Well, over the last, basically the COVID period, and there was a, an earthquake out there. So over the last sort of four years, 
the founder on his own dime has continued to work on this project. And at the laboratory level, he's achieving uh, higher results of recovery of gold in the, in the plant they built using state-of-the-art uh, machinery. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not a metallurgist, but the, you know, the melters and smelters and micro, uh, 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 you know, things you look into, micro, whatever those are called, um, uh, microscopes and all that, all Batman and Robin, Batcave quality, you know, top of the line. They've, they've more than, they've basically increased the amount of reserves that you could extrapolate from about 6 million to 30 million ounces. And the use of proceeds from this raise is going to include drilling deeper and wider. And there's no reason to believe because it's it's all the same material. The only reason the reserves were capped, they only drilled to a certain level. They didn't go deeper except with one or two. So they, they only looked at part of it. They didn't drill wider. So they're going to do that. And they actually believe that the upside is 100 million ounces of gold, 100 million. Well, anyway, these start becoming, you know, what's he smoking type numbers. Um, so here's the two risks. They have a process that's been developed over years that works over and over and over and over and over and over and over again on a lab laboratory scale at the plant they built. They need to build a, they have a pilot plant, but it got damaged by the earthquake. They need to rehab that and incorporate new machines and new systems to scale up this production using this new methodology, which is patent, you know, it's it's proprietary. It's clean, it's environmental friendly. Um, they can do all of this with, by the end of the year or sooner if they get the money right away. The risk is, does it, what if it doesn't scale up? Well, I've been assured it will scale up because they have scaled it up from the original smaller recovery to this new level of recovery with no problem. They believe they'll be able to scale, just take that and scale the uh, production mechanisms with no problem. But that is a risk. That is a risk. Uh, if, if, I don't know, negative valence or something comes in, that could delay the results. I I really believe that we're at that. I don't see it. Well, it's a risk, but I don't see it as materializing. Maybe there's a delay in time, but the time frame we're talking about here is building the pilot plant, producing gold within six months. And once you produce it, you can sell the whole company. Who's the buyer? Newmont or Barrick. <clears throat> the other risk is um, uh, whether or not by drilling deeper or wider, you can increase the resource. So let's just go back to the resource that they were they did independently verify and they did get outside calculations for and that's around 30 million ounces of gold 
at today's prices and to and their analysis of how much their process will cost the gold they'll recover it'll be over many years the gold they'll recover at 30 at roughly 30 million ounces of gold not 100 million i'm just throwing that away is 71 billion dollars 71 billion dollars this raise that's currently happening values the company at $32 million, $32 million. I own this, I'm one of the, you know, I wouldn't say I'm one of the largest investors, but I'm certainly one of the major investors. I, I, I don't know what English language to use there, but I'm not the, you know, the big swinging guy, but I, I'm in the, you know, my name would be on the plaque if all was said and done. I'd make the cutoff as an investor in this, but guess what? I, I paid much more than it now. So why is it available now at these prices? The, the wealthy investors, and there's at least two dozen of them, there may be more, are old now. They're all they're all old, they're wealthy, and they're tired though. They've they've made their commitment, they're tired. I think as soon as someone puts up some money, now I'm not talking about a little bit of money. They're raising five million. I think once half of that's raised, the rest of it will disappear just like that. I'll go, Phew. hey, I want to get in. I want to get in. I want to get in because these guys are all wealthy. But right now they're on strike. Um, the the prime mover, who is also extremely wealthy, <laughs> for health reasons. Not the not the not the engineer, not the metallurgist, the financial side of the company. For health reasons, his family has, you know, basically said no, no more. So anyway, there's an opportunity at at the end of the process to buy into this company at a fraction of what everybody paid, including me. There are some, they did raise some money uh, over the last couple of years, mainly from this one guy whose family said, you can't do it anymore. I think they raised it at the, sort of the same price, but I didn't. I wasn't offered the chance that I remember anyway, and I didn't, I didn't. But um, anyway, People are tired, worn out, the original investors. The company received a buyout offer last month, which they almost took. And I was furious. I was like, I don't want you to do this deal. But the buyer put a poison clause in it. And thank God, the major shareholder says, no, we don't want that. So we have an opportunity, if we act quickly, to get into this at a at a 30, roughly $30 million valuation for something that could be worth 71 billion. <laughs> but guess what? It could be worth 250 billion. Um the the um engineer, the metallurgist, the science, the brains of it owns, I don't know, 40% of the company. So everything he does is going to be in your interests if you come in. Now, I, I cannot uh, recommend this to you or, or, or um, make an offer to you on it. If you're interested, 
I can connect you to the company and they can provide the materials directly to you. There's no markup or markdown or whatever. Um, Just send me your name or contact at farandbalanced at gmail. Farandbalanced at gmail. Farandbalanced at gmail. And I'll call you or email you, and um, I'll put you in touch with the company. Um, I'm going to try to invest in it if I can in this round. Now, going to your question, Greg, why do I bring this up? Um, this values the gold in the ground. Now, it may not work. That's the problem. If, if as they build the pilot plant, uh i don't know the 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 fact that the the aluminum they use along the table interacts with the i don't know the oxide in the process i don't know i'm making it up and it confuses it all they go oh no we didn't think about that we have to go back to the table and then it's more time and more money i don't think there's a risk of that happening anymore, but there could be, there could be. But anyway, let me, using the um, 33 million ounces, which is a guess, but I think it's a good guess. Um So there's, it, it's four shares per ounce, if I'm doing this right. Four shares per ounce. Let me do it again. I don't think that's right. That's not right. 24 shares per ounce. So if this if they get this deal done, there'll be for every 24 shares at the 33 million ounces, if it works, and I believe it will, I think we're just the pilot plant will take away all doubt. Every share is worth a 24th of an ounce. But let's, um, do you know, Greg, what gold's trading for per ounce? I think it's 2300 This raise is priced at a dollar an ounce. You're paying a dollar an ounce of potential gold in the ground at the 33 million ounces, paying a dollar. And it's trading at 2300 and I think it's going to, I think it's going to 40,000 an ounce. So that's why I show you that one, Greg. So anyway, that's, let me just finish that discussion up by saying, Greg, I think everybody should own gold and silver. I think you should own it in physical form. If you can't do that, buy the Sprott Asset Physical Silver Trust. That's Paul, Sam, Larry, Victor, PSLV, or the Gold Trust, Sprott Asset Management. Sprott, Physical Silver Trust. Sprott, Physical Gold Trust. They're, they're the only ones I would buy. I think there's others, but I trust Sprott. 
if you buy ETFs, trade them. They they don't have any gold or silver in them. They're just vehicles to trade. And I think uh, gold you should own. It'll be steady, and one day they'll revalue it. Silver is highly volatile, highly manipulated. But I also think one day that'll have a move, and you'll be glad you have, have it. If those prices get too high, for example, gold right now, to buy one ounce, you have to pay, I think, 2300 Let me look it up. Uh, actually, it's it's up forty dollars today. You have to pay two thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars per ounce of gold. Two thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars per ounce of gold. This deal, yes, it's risk. It could all go poof. You're paying a dollar for the estimated amount of gold. You're paying a dollar an ounce. I'd say that's pretty good risk reward. Now, I in one of my videos, there's a company, I don't know where the book is, called Nova Gold out of Alaska. Um, they may have a discovery as big as 44 million ounces. That would be a really big they they've already they're already producing it. They already, but it may grow to be that big. Um, the, it's in the Golden Triangle up in uh, Canada, I believe, uh, or Alaska. I think it's Alaska. Anyway, my point, Greg, is after gold and silver start to run, and I and you're seeing it happen now. The way to maximize your return is to go into mining shares, mining, and you should start with the bluest chip. Numa, uh, uh, Barrick, this Nova. Uh, uh, I like a company that is called, um, sorry, it begins with an A. I can't remember it right now. And I'll try to give you some names. But you go with the blue or chip ones. Then you go with the middle ones. You start with Papa Bear, Mama Bear, Baby Bear. And then you go with even the unborn, so to speak, the ones that are still ideas. But that's how the valuation will roll so you can get the biggest increase in the value of your assets. All right, that was a long answer. I'm sorry. Gold is two, 2,400. It's moving. Wow. All right, Brandon Judkins, I'll do that. Are you a, are you a relation to Bob Judkins out of Baltimore, DC, Baltimore? Um, well, I don't know, Bill, what you mean by MMTLP is, well, I'm not going to go back through it. I just waited, spent a long time talking about it. Um, MMTLP is not going to be resolved in any time frame that's going to give you an opportunity to buy gold, buy silver, buy any of these stocks. The legal system, in my judgment, will take a decade. Congress will not do anything this year, in my judgment, because they have an election coming up. And then it's at least two more years. Congress is bought and paid for. Journal, there is no journalism. So I don't I don't know what you mean by MMTLP being resolved. 
you personally can resolve MMTLP. I have I have 4,269 shares. <laughs> pretty pretty paltry amount, I know, but I overpaid for it. So it's a lot of money to me. Uh, which I removed from my brokerage firm, and it's now at the transfer. Well, the physical shares are here, but it's recorded at the transfer agent. And I just went through Bill Cooper that that's worth a lot of money right now. I think, even if you assume the worst. Now, if the legal system takes years and years and years, the only thing left is that the financial system decides we want to resolve this because the risk is high. We're going to lose money. It's the only thing they're motivated by. Well, if you own the shares of Nextbridge and they drill, baby drill, I hate that expression, but if they drill and they prove up and they get two companies bidding on them and it looks like the stock's going to go to $1,000 or $2,000, Wall Street's going to settle. And you're not going to miss out in any of that settlement, in my judgment, if you own your shares at Nextbridge. Why? Because there's an imbalance of shares. So I think in that settlement, Wall Street would be glad to offer cash to you to, res to get your shares. And you'll have that choice. If there's a dividend payment, it's going to go to everybody. If there's a pain and suffering or a penalty payment, I believe it's going to go to everybody. I'm not a lawyer. Okay, that's if it works to the positive. You don't lose anything by being in Nextbridge. But what if, Bill Cooper, what if, you're, while you're waiting for it to be resolved, what if Congress remains purchased? What if the lawyers on the other side convince Congress that, hey, these weren't the original shareholders, or, hey, these guys are just speculators, or, hey, the financial system is too big to fail. You can't pay out this because it'll cause a bank to go down. Or, hey, they're just retail anyway. Let's just offer them five bucks. I don't know, Bill Cooper. Why would you put yourself? You look like a guy, if that's a real picture, you look like a guy that does things for yourself, that gets out there. You get on the court. You score your own goals. You, you exercise. You do your own work. Why would you let others resolve MMTLP for you? Resolve it for yourself. Move your shares. He was, uh, Brandon, he was the manager of Alex Brown, Bob Judkins, a uh, friend of mine. I'm, I'm sure he, you know, he he's elderly now or maybe, or maybe gone. I don't know. But I liked him very much. Uh, I liked him. He smoked and lived. But he, I liked him. Very much. Uh, so that's why I asked. Northern Maine. Well, he was one of the white shoe kind of guys. He worked, he may have come from up there. Um, and Alex Brown's headquarters were in Baltimore. And it, maybe he started up there. I don't know. I don't know. Nicole, let me see what. Nicole says, um, transfer agent said it's not. Yeah, I think what you mean, there's a term and I'm forgetting it right now. They can't transfer the stock directly to electronically to the transfer agent. Why is that? The whole system's electronic now. That's to fool you. That's to counterfeit. That's to steal from you. 
it used to be certificates were by nature. They, you could have type one and type two accounts. Type one, you could ha ask. It, automatically, your shares would go in your own name. They'd be held in safekeeping. You couldn't margin them. That's what five-day settlement was for. Because when you sold them, they had to go into the vault, pull your shares, stamp, get your your signature, boom, boom, bop, boom, bop, get a bike, send it across town, get it in the other, boom, bop, boom, ding, done, settled. But now what they've done is they've made everything electronic. So they can lie to you. You can't check. <laughs> so anyway, MMTLP and NextBridge are, are uh, not publicly traded stocks. So they are not eligible to be elect in the electronic system as if that's some great thing. So you're not able to transfer the stock from your account to the transfer agent as an electrical blip. What they'll do, they, Nicole, I don't, oh, you're at TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade got a block of stock because that's how it reads on the, the list provided to NextBridge. It'll say Gregory McKay, uh, 20, I don't know how many he has, 20 million shares because he has his stock in his name. It'll say um, uh, uh, you know Stormy Daniels, a hundred shares because it's in her name. But then you, Nicole, or me, up until recently, your shares aren't in your name. They're at TD Ameritrade, so it shows making it up. Uh, 10 million shares at TD Ameritrade. At, and that's all it shows at the transfer agent. That's called street name, street name. It's in street name. And you own a piece of that, according to TD Ameritrade. Now, I would argue that there, there's at least one, if not many firms out there, you know, there's a, reportedly 104 or 105 broker dealers ensnared in this mess, brokerage firms. But I would I would guess that it's probably only five to maybe maybe ten of the brokerage firms are actually in a situation, Nicole where their, their back office didn't follow up and make sure the trade settled in your account. TD Ameritrade could be one of those groups. I thought E-Trade was, and it may still be, but I got my shares and I'm very happy about that. Um, so anyway, uh, what they have to do is peel those shares off and they probably have to send something to the transfer agent. My envelope came. My envelope, I'm not going to show it to you, but my envelope came from the depository trust. So my shares came directly from the depository trust. So I guess what will happen, Nicole, and I guess what happened with my request is they sent it up to Morgan State, you know, E-Trade, sent it up to the depository trust and said, break out, uh, break out 1,264 shares from our block in the name of E-Trade and distribute that to William. And um, that's what takes time. And then the depository trust out of Jersey City, New Jersey, 
overnighted it to me. And that's why I think I paid 60 bucks. I think it, you know, FedEx can cost 60 bucks anyway. So I'm glad you're doing it, Nicole. Um, two to five year. Um, yeah, I'd already answered that. Um, 2K shares. I don't know which one you're talking about. Did Finger specify? Not yet. Not yet. Um, but you know what? Kitties never die. You can always look it up. So let's look it up. I know it's hard for you to do. We'll go to Yahoo Finance. Google Yahoo Finance. It says my computer's saying it's undefined. All right, so that doesn't work. Let's go to OTC Markets. Well, let's go to let's go to Nasdaq. And we will type in the symbol for finger, F-N-G-R. We'll hit send. And then it'll come up and it will say news, press releases. We'll go to press releases. And we don't find any. Okay, so we'll go to OTC Net. I mean, OTC Markets. I worked at OTC Net briefly. That was a company. Um, I never I left without ever doing a trade. Yet. I saw what they were about. All right. Um, we'll go to Finger and we'll go to Disclosures. It doesn't show there. So we'll go to finger motion. Dot com. Kitties. We'll go to investor relations. Go to news. Press release. Only other place I can think to go is to the SEC. Exempt offering. No. There it is. So you go to you go to the SEC, you type in finger, and they uh, filed a prospectus on April 9th for two for fifty two million seven hundred and twelve. 850 warrants to purchase 5,271,285 shares. So one for 10. You're getting one warrant per share, but it buys a tenth of a uh, share. And no, they have not given the record date yet.
So it has to go through the approval process. And I don't know. Let's Google that, kitties never die. How long does a S3 registration take to be approved? I'm, I'm glad to S3. I got to put a dash in it because it's giving me a, a weird answer. While the filing of shelf registration statements on Form S3 does not in most cases result in an SEC review, the time it takes to receive SEC clearance following the filing is relatively short, often 10 days or less. So kitties, stay tuned. And in, in, by the 19th of April, we should have a pretty good idea when the record date Yeah, I, I've gotten heat on the ruble, Brian, many times. But um, I don't own any rubles. I wish I knew how to buy them, but that's where I'd go. The bricks are about to use blockchain and will block it by gold and silver. Well, Augustine, that is... Do you know how the mercantile system got in trouble? <laughs> the gold standard? They, they used to have a gold standard. It doesn't work. Um, everyone wants it, but it doesn't work. Trust works up to a point. And then a, you get a country that's, that's controlled by the banksters like the United States, and we're on the verge of being a third world uh, type country ruled by the, uh, by the oligarchs. But um, Augustine, how do you pay for building out infrastructure that requires an outlay of money over 40 years? with blockchain backed by gold and silver. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You need a bond market that's deep and honest. Ours isn't anymore. So if China and Russia, I think Europe's finished in, in because they're just like we are. But if, if China, Russia, Middle East, Saudi Arabia, maybe, maybe a few African countries, Brazil, can create a bond market deep and trusted, they can, they can destroy our bond market. But for the time being, blockchain backed by gold and silver is not going to replace our bond market. It's just how it is. Let's see how T low hits a new low. I tried to find, I tried to find uh, that New York Post front page that I remember from 20 years ago that said J Lo hits a new low. I always remember it. I can't find it. J Lo hits a new low. That's why I say T Lo hits a new low. Now, it's at eight. It's at eight twenty. All right. Um, I think NVIDIA is going to go to a thousand, not because it does, that's just what they'll do. Uh, Jay Nong, 
J Nug and PSO doing just fine. Yeah, there's um, there's two ETFs, and I'm right now I'm forgetting the symbol. One's for uh, gold miners, and one's for smaller gold miners. Right now I'm forgetting the symbols. I wasn't prepared for this these questions, I guess. But the fact is, the smaller mining ETF is almost the same as the bigger one. The small mining space has been completely destroyed by criminals and completely ignored. That's why an opportunity like the one I just told you is available. Uh, yes, exactly, Robert. It has to become mainstream again. Uh, equinity should allow me to do that. I would like to buy NBH at 100. Yes, exactly. Kit, let me take a second. Um, hunting the elephants. I got to write that down somewhere else. Hunting the elephants. All right, Kit, I'm going to take a risk because I haven't, I'm just going to do this calculation totally raw, but I'm going to take, I'm going to take the high case here, not the low case, take the high case, 5 billion barrels, 5 billion barrels, okay. All right, 5 billion barrels. And I'm going to use $30 because I'm going to assume that that's proven and recover. It says recoverable. I'm just using those numbers. I'm using what Exxon paid for Pioneer a few months back when oil was 60 bucks. It's now 90 bucks. All right, let's start with that number, Kit. Um, uh, five billion times 30, you already know what it is. It's 150 billion. Dollars, $150 billion. And for purposes of a settlement, I'm only going to divide it by 165 million shares. That gives $909 a share. $909 per share. And if you add $50 for uh, the lawyers, $100 for pain and suffering as a dividend, and maybe $25 uh, or whatever the difference is between nine and 50 for uh, costs, you're talking, you're talking uh, $1,100 a share to settle this. For the system, eleven $1 hundred dollars a share. Kit, that's the number I think is what it's really worth. Because when I divide by five hundred million shares, I'm assuming they issued those shares right for money, but I'm not giving credit for what they used the money for. Bunny Ranch, gold is breaking new highs. I was talking about logic uh, on the on the chart, but this this other company I was talking about is a private gold. Well, it's a gold company outside of. I don't know where my Alf mug is. Oh, uh, do I have some? I am not going to tell you whether or not I own physical silver. I do not own gold. Uh, I used to own a lot of physical silver. 
and um, I, I got involved in some real estate transactions and uh, I had to sell my silver to uh, to you know to end those those uh, trades. So, um, uh, but I I would recommend Greg if you buy physical, don't tell anybody. Logic is LGIQ. LGIQ. Here's the chart. Don't chase it. Don't chase it. Do not chase it. But it's breaking out, I think. And I think it's going to fill that gap. That's only 15 cents. Hey, if you pay two and a half cents and it goes to five, you've doubled your money. The raw videos are perfect. Thank you, Didith. Um, I think, Bill Cooper, um, you may be here to cause FUD, you, or maybe not. I, I just don't know. But I, I just went through a long, uh, almost too long, explanation of why right now, on paper, NextBridge is worth a shite load of money. And they have the team, they have the management, they have the desire to prove up the reserves without resorting to the destructive devils on Wall Street. Yeah, I probably should use Deacon. So that gives you, on my number before, that gives you $200. Uh, Hey, Bill Young. Yeah, Dennis, I talked to many of you and and I talked to somebody last night and it came, two things triggered this. One, I got my shares. So I'm somebody that when I buy something, then I study it. It's a weird, you should do it the other way around. But I've learned too many times when there's an opportunity in front of you and you see it, other people see it too. So you got to act. Once you act, then you study it. That's that's my back ass word way of doing things. But um, so I I did it for myself, studied Torchlight. But I also talked to a few people, one person in particular last night, and I realized that people do not have confidence in the value of NextBridge Holdings. I could have made a longer presentation just now, and maybe I will do a video on the releases. But when you listen to guys like Bill Cooper say things like they want NextBridge Holdings to go bankrupt, that scares you. There's no basis for that statement. That's a, that's a purely apropos nothing statement. The SEC doesn't want NextBridge Holdings to go bankrupt. Um, the criminals want NextBridge Holding hydrocarbons to trade so they can hide their counterfeit shares and they can continue to destroy the market cap of a public company. But guess what? Greg McCabe's not going to do that. And I just showed you earlier that just based on the lease value alone, they have two or three or four dollars a share using, using, um, hang on one second. Hello? Hello? Ah, too bad. <laughs> I think he accidentally dialed me. I'm trying to find a tax accountant. I called my tax accountant about a month ago, emailed him. He said, I can't help you. I'm too busy. And and he called me. So I didn't want the call to pass, but nobody was there. So anyway, 
when Bill Cooper says something like they want it to go bankrupt, nobody wants Nextbridge to go bankrupt, but the criminals want it to publicly trade so they can crush the stock price. If it goes bankrupt, that's that's an added benefit. But what they want to do, anything good, gets diluted on a per share basis to next to nothing. McCabe knows this, and just on the leases alone, there's two, three, four dollars a share. And I used five hundred million. If if like um, uh, this gentleman, a Deacon Blues said, use two hundred and fifty. It's you know it's like eight dollars a share, six, seven, eight dollars a share, just on the lease value alone. So I don't agree with Bill Cooper. Bankruptcy implies zero. I don't agree. Just on the leases alone, and I think that's a low value. I really do. Oil is hotting up. Deals are are selling like popcorn. I think the price would be much higher than that, just on the leases. So I don't I don't buy into Bill Cooper's uh here. The pen drill is only 15 barrels a day and they aren't selling it to market. Um, I will admit, Robert, I haven't, I don't know what you're talking about with the pen drill, but I'm going to make an assumption. I think you're talking about the shallow production where they did that plat, they did a a spot, a pattern. They they drilled five wells off of one platform. I think it was one platform. Uh uh shallow. I don't know what I'm talking about any further than than that. But that was the shallow drilling, which to my understanding, Robert helps hold the leases it it fulfills a drilling requirement and by by producing even 15 barrels a day let's call it let's call it 10 barrels a day net of costs at $90 times 30 it brings in 30 grand a month well that pays for something that one well pays for something. It's not a lot. But you don't have to go to the criminals for money. But Robert, what I understand, and again, I'm I'm talking beyond my full expertise here. Uh, the guy that really knows this well is Pecos Bill and and there's other and I'll I I can learn, I make a presentation, is that the university lands wells um are drilled, but they haven't started producing them because a delay in production avoids recognizing a taxable gain. I believe that explanation is correct. But Robert, that doesn't mean that those 15 or 20 or 30 wells they've drilled deeper and and are not producing will not produce at at respectable rates into on the university lands wells leases. This pen, I don't quite know enough. To sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I, if it's the shallow production where they drilled five or six wells, I didn't expect Robert, and I said it, I think here, but I certainly said it in other forums, aura, that out of the five wells, I didn't expect they'd produce more than a hundred barrels a day total. Because it's shallow production. And I, I thought that would be the highest limit. So if one is producing 15 and they've drilled four or five, 
that kind of is in the range of what I would expect. Shallow wells are not barn bus, uh, barn burners, but guess what? They hold the lease and they pay your bills. I just stopped in to have a cup of coffee, friend. I just popped on here to tell you how much I appreciate me. Your well-being is way more important than YouTube. Please don't hesitate. Thank you very much, Maddie SF8. I appreciate it. And you know what, Maddie? I really appreciate positive feedback. I'm usually not good at taking it. I brush it off. But being here all with my dog, I don't get any feedback, you know. I'm just blabbing. <laughs> so it helps because sometimes I get off these calls and I'm just destroyed. I'm I'm uh, I'm gutted, as they say in the UK. All right, let's see. My issues with MMTPL now is they're still not selling oil or gas to the market. Well, Robert, I I understand that, but may I, if I were running MMTLP, and I'm not saying I should be, um, my main goal, my first goal, because, and and here I'm not a lawyer, but I've raised money, I've been involved with money. I've lost money. I've made money. I've been involved with money with lawyers and bankers and wankers and, and charlatans and everything. My guess is, Robert, uh, that Nextbridge is finding it difficult to go out and do a standard plain vanilla equity raise. Partly that's because some of the firms they're going to deal with are going to just hand the shares to the shorts, the criminals, and they got to protect against that. Another part of it is if I were a lawyer, and I'm not, but if I were a lawyer at one of the brokerage firms, or if I were a lawyer at a hedge fund, or if I were a lawyer for a criminal, or if I were a lawyer for a prime broker, I would have filed things or sent letters that gummed up the works. There's better deals out there for money that can stay away from all that trouble. That's my opinion. So what can Greg McCabe do to resolve that issue? He can make sure that every single share of Nextbridge hydrocarbons that exists for the purposes of honoring one for one with MMTLP is spoken for. That would be my number one priority as I negotiated with, with uh, uh, lawyers and all of that. Sort of on a compliance level, that would be my number one priority. The second priority he has, in my judgment, which he's already done magnificently, is to increase his ownership of Ora Grande, which he's done, to make sure that Nextbridge Hydrocarbon has all of the acreage they want. He may want to acquire other acreage, Robert. Because remember, he is the geologist and he has the seismic. What else does he have, Robert? He has the science from the 15, 20, 25 wells he drilled. Now you, as a, a reasonable, sensible investor go, well, that bugs me. He's not telling me what's in those wells. Guess who else he's not telling? He's not telling the competition. He's a private company. He is, they call it a tight hole. He's hold, holding those holes tight. Now in Texas, there's a requirement to give certain amount of the data to the Railroad Commission and everybody can look at it. But by not producing, by not producing, 
He's not disclosing. What does that allow him to do? That allows him to acquire more acreage. That allows him to try to acquire maybe a company or leases in the honeypot, in the sweet spot, in the fairway that he's looking for. So it doesn't bother me. I my operationally, other than hiring good people, getting the debt structure in, in which he's done, he's cleaned up his debt, getting as many of the uh, complicated issues out of the way, lining up to be ready to raise money in the markets. I would be looking at trying to drill, gain data for myself, for NextBridge, myself, so that I knew where to go put my hands on the next leases before the competition drives the prices of those leases up. And then uh, my other priority, uh, obviously, would be um, staying in touch with my investors. And he's done that brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly. Next bridge keeps everybody up to date. I, I, I have absolutely no problem with MMTLP slash NextBridge. And I personally am thrilled to own shares, even though it's a very small amount, in the private company NextBridge with Greg McCabe and his team in charge. I am absolutely over the moon. And I kicked myself. I should have bought more. Woulda, shoulda, coulda. But at least I bought what I bought. I should have bought it sooner. And I'd right now I'd have 20,000 shares. But I have what I have. And I, I tell you, Robert, um, I think we couldn't be in a better position. Uh, these guys are good nicks. That could be Vin Man. Um, it's I like how you're thinking. They could be trying to get people chasing fingers so they sell GTI. That helps out the GTI because I think they're all. It's a small fraternity. I really do believe they know each other, stay out of each other's pools. Um, it's not bad, but I don't really think that's happening. I think you should be careful with, with Finger not to overpay like I do. You know, if you don't have a position, buy 10%, buy 25%, buy a third, and then bid for the rest every day for a while. But I, I like that. I think that's pretty smart, Vin. Hi, June. How are you? Um, uh, I. It's funny, geology and civil engineering. Uh, uh, as I talk to you, I'm not, I, I know your eyes are there, but your picture's there. Um, uh, I'm embarrassed but I don't quite know what civil engineering means. I assume it's the structure of society, cities, uh, how we transport, how commerce is done. But I have to admit I'm making an assumption. And geology was my, where I went to school, they, they didn't quite have majors and minors. They made it all too complicated because they're, you know, they called themselves the Harvard of the South and all that. Uh, it had to be overly complicated. But it was a cone, which it was my minor. Geology was my minor. And uh, uh, 
I learned I I was around some odd ducks, but I found myself fascinated by it, Jim. And uh, if I can call your attention to a guy on YouTube and elsewhere named uh, hmm, I'll think of it. Hancock and let me let me see if I can find it. I have a brain that that doesn't remember things anymore right off the top. Um, yeah, there's his name. Randall Randall Carlson. Randall Carlson. He's a to me I'd love to I'd love to be in his class. I'd love to listen to him. Um, cuz geologists much like archaeologists uh they don't see time or the world like we do they live the same time span lifespan but he's fascinating because june he has along with graham hancock who i also recommend highly he has a belief that the ice caps that covered north america melted almost in a heartbeat, caused by comets that hit about 12,000 years ago, 11 or 13,000 years ago. I'm doing it by memory. And his theory is the Grand Canyon didn't take eons to melt. It happened in the blink of an eye. Now, I don't know if he means two weeks, two months, two years, two decades, but in geologic time, it happened, you know, overnight. And it fascinates me. And I, that, I, if you love it, look up Randall Carlson, listen to him. He's interviewed sometimes by that guy everybody loves that works out and has tattoos, Joe Rogan. I have a hard I don't know why it is. I don't find his questions. He, I love his guests. I love his courage. And I love his integrity. But listening to his questions, I, I don't know. I tune out. But try to, try to listen to Randall Carlson. If you love geology, it's a fascinating spin on it. Um, uh, but it's funny. Uh, I ended up most of my life focusing on oil and gas and energy and mining from a financial side. But my geology, the little bit I got, really has helped me. So thank you, June. I really appreciate it. And I don't know uh, if it's appropriate from your last name, maybe just your husband. Maybe just you. I don't know. I don't. I'm stepping, risk, making assumptions. But if it applies, uh, happy I eat. Seven hundred billion. Bob Barker. Seven hundred billion for MMTLP. Well, beetle bug, let me read for in case people are driving or flying aeroplanes. Beetle bug, we common people should not have to do anything with MMTLP. The burden is on the higher ups who get paid to solve it. Well, I, I actually think you're right in a normal market that after the 12th, you should have received those shares without having to do a thing. But our markets are corrupted by the banks. Gary Gensler, as the titular head of the regulatory bodies, uh, Robert Cook, um, the guy that runs over the counter markets with three or four names that begin with C, and Adriana Friedman at NASDAQ, they're all on the side of the banksters. They're not on the side of you. 
And so the structures that are out there help the banks push the limits by, by selling shares that don't exist, by increasing assets under management, by increasing fees, by juicing their returns at your expense. So it, Beetlebug 24, it is impossible for the system to automatically send your shares to you. It's impossible. My understanding, Beetlebug, is there's something between half a billion and a billion shares counterfeited in your accounts, in my account. Because how do you tell the difference between a real share and a fake share when they're all electronic blips? How do you tell the difference? Um, I now know my shares are real. I didn't, exp I, I didn't believe I'd get my last shares. That's why I'm telling you, do it while it's still there. But anyway, those shares were sold while it was torchlight. That was passed on to MMAT. MMAT was sold to Oblivion, still is, in my judgment. And then MM MMTLP counterfeitedly was created into existence, and that was shorted because the rats are trapped. They will break every law they can. Why? Because they get away with it. Mr. Gensler should be fired, but the problem is they'll put probably the woman, Virginia Countrywide, in because it's time to have a woman. Um, and we all know women, women can do everything better than men. Um, but the fact is she doesn't know what she's doing either. They will all be on the side of the banks. So, Beetlebug, where does that leave you? Go with it. Just sit there. Hey, I shouldn't have to do anything. Or Beetlebug, if you act, you know, if you actually own shares, take it upon yourself to have responsibility and do it for yourself. It's not that hard. I had to make a dozen phone calls and I have the worst temperament in the world. for making these phone calls. I did it. I got it done. You can do it. Now, let me give you a reason to do it. If, I'm not a lawyer, but if I were the lawyer, if I were the lawyer on the criminal side of the table, I would go before your honor, your honor, your offer, I, or your honor, you're off him. Your honor, Beetlebug24 bought the shares for speculative purposes, and then Beetlebug had at least until March 28th, to get shares out. Why do I know that? Because Mr. Ferrand, Mr. Ferrand owns a certificate number NBH000. Between 3,000 and 4,000. So Beetlebug had a chance to get their shares, but they didn't do it. So your honor, we don't feel it's our responsibility if the client couldn't make sure they did the simple task of requesting their shares. We don't think it's on us to deliver those shares to him because the system, uh, FINRA stopped trading. The system wasn't allowed to get rid of uh, the excess and minuses in a standard call out, bid and ask way for two days. And now you're asking us here three years later 
to come up with a price and the client didn't even bother to transfer their shares from MMTLP into NextBridge and they had at least uh, a year and a half to do so. So we claim, Your Honor, your offer, that it's net the that it's laziness and and uh what's the word uh there's a legal term we feel beetlebug 24 by ignoring this gave up their rights by remaining silent there's a term for it i'm not a lawyer um so under such and such case in such and such court, we believe that Beetlebug 24 forfeited their right to shares because they showed no interest in them. Do you want to put yourself at that risk, Beetlebug? Beetlebug, call your broker. Look, by, by Morgan Stanley's own, by, by E-Trade's own date, uh, that they gave me, they told me that the request was effective March 1st. I believe I asked from January, but I'm not going to argue with them many times in February. But on their record books, they showed March 1st. Well, this certificate was issued on March 28th. That's 30 days. So I dis I respectfully disagree with you. If you want to be a common person, if you want to be the hoi polloi, if you want to be in the masses who are asses, if you want to be the sheeple, if you want to be a victim, don't do anything. But I think, Beetlebug, on my channel, people are here because they're a cut above victimhood. They're a cut above uh, sheep, they're a cut above common people. I think the people that tune in here are exceptional and they are paying attention to their finances. And I'm telling you, you do have a responsibility to do something with MMTLP. And that something is move your shares. <laughs> Robert, your uh, your uh, uh, my brother agrees with you, and he he worked at McKinsey and Co. Uh, in energy, and the Russians agree with you, and a CEO I raised money for agrees with you. So who knows? Hey, John Croson. Um, Diana wants to know, have any Canadians uh, been able to transfer yet? I don't know that answer, but maybe someone here does. Yeah, Deacon Blues. I was trying, you know, one, I'm trying to do two things. In settlement talks, my number is very high because I, and I back it up, but I'm trying to the people that are about transferring MMTLP, which is worthless. MMTLP is worthless on its own. It owns nothing. It has no management. It has no upside. It has no oil wells. It has no leases. It's just a chit. <clears throat> hey, I, I left my uh, cashmere coat here. I was, I was with that lovely blonde and we were drinking. And uh, we left at about 3.30 in the morning, and uh, I haven't been back for a few days, but do you still have my coat? Here, I have this chit. Do you still have it? It was worth a few thousand dollars. It, it, it's still there, is it? Do you still have it? Oh, I know it says on here you have no responsibility, and you don't take, there's a legal, there's a legal uh, term 
uh, can't remember that either. But they specifically say they have no obligation under that legal. They, they don't accept any. Is it still there? That's all you're going to have. Are my shares of, MM, of an expert still there? No? Okay. All right. I'll, I'm going to call my attorney. I'm calling my attorney, and he is going to go after you. And then I'm going to call my daughter, who's also an attorney, and she's going to go after you. And we are going to lay a pile of, of, of legal attack on you you won't recover from. <laughs> okay. And as soon as you run through fifty, a hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, you'll stop. You run out of money. So the one thing I do was trying to do, Deacon, is show that even if you go, just try to be as destructive to the value as conservative, as you say, to the valuation, just come up with the lowest possible numbers. Transferring to Nextbridge is better than doing nothing. There's going to come a time, Deacon Blues, I'm not talking to you directly, but there's going to come a time when Greg McCabe announces every single share of Nextbridge which was was provided was allocated for the transfer of MMTOP has been issued. We've done our job, and we're going to set about building our company. Then people are going to say, "What do I have? What do I have?" Right now, in MMTOP, you have everything that I described and more that Torchlight wrote out as the largest domestic shore news field discovery in 30 years. You have all that right now. Why? Because you can convince yourself, and I think accurately, that your MMTLP will transfer into Nextbridge shares. That's what I'm encouraging you to do. I just did it. it took me took me a while, and I told you I, I didn't think it would get done. It got done. I think you can get it done. But eventually it's going to get to the point where you're going to go call your broker and say, we don't have any. Well, then what do you have? You don't own Nextbridge at that point. You don't own it. You don't own dividends. You don't own the reserves. You don't own the potential uh, for a buyout. You don't own any of that at that point. You just do not have that. By his good graces, it's possible Greg McCabe will pay a dividend to everyone, but I doubt it because his lawyers are going to say you can't do that. If there's a cash dividend from Wells, it will go to Nextbridge shareholders. But you won't have that. You'll have a chit saying, do you have my cashmere coat? I left it here last winter. Oh, I know it looked like I didn't care about it. I abandoned it. But I, I you know, it's winter again. Do you have it? Oh, you gave it away? Well, I'm going to sue you. Well, good luck on that. Because when you have MMTLP and it's no longer transferable into Nextbridge, all you're going to have is a hat check uh, chit. You're going to have a chit for your car. You're going to have a chit. And it's only going to have value if Richard Hoffman, Rosa are successful in their lawsuits or if on a queen of trades is and junk savvy and and busy brands are successful in Congress to get a settlement. That's one way. There's one other way is if 
the uh, cost of Wall Street doing nothing starts skyrocketing because Nextbridge is booming. Well, the compliance officers at the broker dealers are going to start saying, we want to settle this and they'll scramble to settle. But what price? You assume, you as, one would assume they'll do it equivalent to next bridge's value. That's what I assume, plus penalties. But if they do it voluntarily, they're not gonna start at that price. They're gonna start at 12 bucks, five bucks. And I bet, I'll tell you what, I bet a lot of people sell. They're chits, they're little chit. They're gonna sell for that. They're little, uh, yeah, I don't have a chit type thing, but a chit, that's all it is. So as soon as all of the shares of Nextbridge are allocated, there's gonna be a panic amongst all of us, not me anymore, to scramble over there. Do it now. Anyway, I'm not talking to you, Deacon Blues, but what I the reason I stopped on your name is that's why I was being conservative, conservative, as harsh as I can to give the lowest possible number. Because even then, it makes so much sense to turn your coat check shit into a bona fide certificate of ownership of Nextbridge Hydrocarbons. Barbara loves Deacon Blue's opinion. Oh, did I say hi to John? Hi, John. I, 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 I didn't mean to pop over that. Um, Uh, hey, Sideshow. Uh, DBM announces strategic alliance with leading transformation consultancy. My, well, it, it may have turned. People that make new positions might be in a position to make money. But they did this financing, and just like I really liked the CEO, I listened to the. There was a gentleman that gave a talk. I liked what I heard. But just like so many companies, they have something. But once they do the financing with guys like Jeff Easton, it's over. It's over. It's over. It keeps over. Hey, Rob Ren, thank you. Hey, Billy Ray, thank you. Nice to see you. That's true, Mark. The shorts are immediately short, whatever that is, uh, 50, 51 million of those, and they're each worth a tenth of a share, so they're short. Um, I just read it to you, you know, whatever that was, 5,700,000 shares. Um, but that's the real part. If, in fact, there's 200 million or more counterfeit shares out there, they're short 200 million of, as you put it, rights, or they're, they're short 20-some million shares. It's a big deal, maybe 27 million. Anyway, whatever it is, it's big. Congress does not want public. Well, that's a, I would listen to Kit Kitteridge. He's saying that he thinks Nextbridge. Uh, we'll put out an 8K saying a purchase price, buyer later to be known, buyer to be named later. Uh, maybe, 
Uh, Kit's very good, so I would follow what he says. He points out that Congress does not want public to know about this. I agree with that. Um, it is delicate for them. And uh, uh, it may be that this will accelerate and it will all redound to our favor. But I still think, I really think, you got to act for yourself. Wow, Deacon Blue. 4,000 shares is worth 4 million. I'm asking that little red haired, -haired girl out on a date. I'm going to print that out and I'm going to show it to her. Yeah, Annette Moore. I agree with you, Barbara. And that I couldn't agree with you more, more uh, fiercely. Finger has great fundamentals, and the shorts are setting it up for a for a move. Hey Barbara, um, Finger won't beetle. Heath Roach, Wow Beetle, astute observation. <coughs> For anybody listening without seeing, I'm going backwards. Hey, Red Pepper Ronnie, thank you. Michael Lonsky, thank you. <clears throat> well, uh, Beetle, um, that is as may be that you know of a company that rang the bell. You can ring my bell, bell, bell. Ring my bell. Ring it, ring it. You can ring my bell, bell, bell. Ring my bell, ring it. That's about all it is about the song. Um, that's good you know one, but that doesn't mean Finger's going to experience that same thing. I do agree with you, though, that ringing the bell probably doesn't do much for the stock price. But I don't agree with your conclusion that you know a company that rang the bell seven years ago. Therefore, Finger might lose 95% of its value. That's, look, I never, I never took a logic course, but that ain't logical. You asked that question yesterday. Um, I think that aluminum is a processed metal. I think it'd be better to buy the ingredients than the final product. But I have absolutely no idea. I have no idea. I'd, I'd buy. I'd look. I'd buy the stock an aluminum aluminum manufacturer. Uh, Cindy Lou's back. Cindy Lou who? Thank you, Linares. Oh, came in during a rant? Well, I guess you're gone. Um, I don't know. I, I tried to be, Cindy, if you're still here. I tried to give information. I don't think I ranted today. But... Maybe, maybe I've ranted so much. Uh, it's like the boy who cries wolf. I focused on logic, and I really tried to focus on it, MMTOP. I don't think I ranted at all. But anyway, sorry, Cindy Lou Who. I, for your, if you're still here, I've encouraged people to pray for Lou, bravo. And I personally have prayed for him. I'm not... I'm not trying to brag on that. I want you to know because I think I offended you by questioning what happened with uh, COSM before, and I didn't mean to. I really didn't mean to. I sincerely believe that Lou deserves credit for the good things he did and uh, our prayers as he has passed away. Uh, hey, Nikolai Cannon.
That's uh, Mexican. We bull is full of bull. We bull crap. Uh, uh, I, my opinion, Mexican, Webull doesn't have any shares at the DTCC. So they're lying to you. Um, what would I do? Maybe you can transfer your position to another company. But anyway, don't panic, Mexican. Don't panic. I Even though I'm emphasizing doing this, I do believe there will be a settlement. Uh, it's just you you lose control. You don't know when or how or how much. So don't panic. Don't don't be panicked. Um, McCabe's not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. Better people than I are not going to quit. Yeah, Fidelity's making excuses, Pistol Pete. Because I think Fidelity is one of the broker dealers in trouble. They're also a private company and they don't maybe have the same disclosure requirements. Uh, this is going to happen at companies. So that's, but don't panic if it doesn't happen. And the, the MMTLP, while it isn't anything, I think the legal and financial pushes that all of us are in will lead to something. Also, I don't think Greg McCabe is going to make any settlements that don't don't include any everybody. So don't give up. I just think it's safer and it's more certainty if you own the stock. I <laughs> know. Look, at, I'm such a technician. All right, I'm gonna go. Yeah, no, Finger hasn't run yet, but I know the feeling. I know the feeling you're describing. I feel the same way. Um, I'm, good morning, Rocket Band, Lee, to be honest. I'm trying to go quickly now because i got to go walk my dog. What's my favorite place to take a lady on a date? Unfortunately, it it's not the way to go when you date women. I I like to go where she likes to go because I enjoy it when she when she uh, is happy. But if I could find somebody that would enjoy going here in D.C. to uh, Cafe Milano or or um, Barcelona, a couple other restaurants. There's a new one. I'm forgetting the name on on. Uh, on uh, M Street, it's a Greek uh, Mediterranean place. It's fantastic. Begins with a B. Something I'd like that. I like also going to see music. Um, if it's if it's someone that I know well, we could go see music where you have to be quiet. But if it's someone I don't know that well, I'd rather just go where you can talk and, you know, all that. Um, and oddly, uh, as I get older, I wouldn't mind just going with someone somewhere, you know, like London or or Brazil. Oh, thank you for recording it, Giannis. That's great. Put it out there. <laughs> Jim H. That's very good. Hoping OJ could have killed the shorts before he left. Marbury Al. All right. Uh, I, I I answered Kima 308's question. Hey, Yasmina. Chris Foray, thank you. B-Man. Roger, thank you. Uh, El Dutorino, Greg Menard. Rocket Man, and that more, Earth Mike, Squire, Evening Squire. Hey, Darren Collins, 
All right, pilot to the moon. All right, I think I got to the bottom. All right, let me go to the the, the newest, and then I'm going to get out of here. Daryl, you didn't rant. You did fine. All right, good. I didn't. I didn't mean to rant. Let me put it that way. I had no intention of ranting. I think maybe. Uh, uh, Oh, anyway, I hope finger rings the bell. Yeah, that would be gay, Charlie Mike. Um, I think the best thing that'll happen for finger is if its value clearly becomes twenty dollars a share, not five dollars. Well, they can do all the dancing around they want. They're going to have a hard time getting it back down to where their prime broker is comfortable with the losses they have. That's what I think will finally bust the shorts is when the prime broker says, oh, heck, we're going to lose a lot of money. We better cover it. John, well, I'll go to the Philippines. You know, it's funny. I'm not, I've never, I don't think I've ever really been. I'm not, I don't need to join in in the swipe left, swipe right, you know, notch my belt type culture. But yeah, I, I like that idea um, where age is just a number. But um, yeah, anyway. I, I think I should leave my naivete behind at this point in life. What's love got to do with it? Thank you, Nunya. Very kind of you. When we sell our warrant, the broker subtracts seven dollars. No, 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 no. It it's like a call option. It's like an option. You will the there'll be a price quoted for the warrant. If I had to guess, when it starts trading, the warrants will trade at 50 cents, even though the stock, if the stock's right now at $3, $4, because there'll be so much excitement about it. Um, but let's just say the stock in two years is trading at, a hundred dollars, like Ham said. The warrants will trade at ninety-three dollars. You can, you know, they. The value of the warrants will be comprised of two things: the intrinsic value, which once the stock goes over seven, is the real value of the warrant minus seven dollars, plus the speculative premium. And the time premium, it's kind of the same thing. But in the middle of enthusiasm, there'll be a speculative premium, but always there'll be a time premium because it expires in, in two years. So no, they won't subtract the seven. You just sell it like any other thing. I don't know if it's ringing the bell Monday. I don't expect that actually to have that big a change, but it's a big deal. It's a big deal. You can ring my bell. Ring my bell. Ring it. Ring it. Um, that's great. I'm glad you sent it to Quinity. I agree with that, Beetle. The game on the short on the criminal side is completely transparent. By time. The lawyers on the other side, by time. People run out of money, they get sick, they die, uh, people get mad at each other. Uh uh they say, Oh hell, I'll just settle. Oh, it's on the 25th. 
Yeah, you'll still be, in my judgment, if you own Nextbridge, you'll still be eligible for a settlement. As in, See, I'm not a lawyer, but there'll be pain and suffering. There'll be the, the penalties for violating the law. There'll be opportunity costs. They'll be missing out on the on the squeeze. All of those settlements, there might be a dividend. You'll be, I, I believe, eligible for all of that. On top of that, Victor, it's my opinion that the problem is so big that when a settlement comes, the glob of all these people involved in the settlement will welcome people shifting from Nextbridge back to MMTLP, if that's their desire, because that will be a cheaper way out of their problem than if you don't. So yeah, I think you'll you'll be part of it. You don't need late Latinum. If you have the paper certificates, assuming you got them over the last couple of years, you don't have to Call, go to go to Nextbridge's website. There's a number there under frequently asked questions. Call Aquinity or whatever it's called now, and and they already have your shares. You do not need to send it. It's safer if you send it. Eventually, eventually, you're going you're going to want to send it in. Why? Because if you wait too long. It won't be free anymore, and you won't be able to get back in the system for less than a couple of grand if you're lucky. So at some point, you need to send it in. But I, no time now and no time soon. So that shouldn't be high on your list of worries right now. Uh, I got to go through this quickly. I got to go walk my dog. That's a good job, Tim. I think that's great. I agree with you, Beetle. I agree with that. I answered that. Gosh, I'm behind. Um, you still I think uh you I I answered that, but yes. Um uh, I think you only weaken your settlement chances. Your maximum benefit you weaken, in my judgment, you got to make your own judgment, by staying in MMTLP. Uh, the one advantage in being MMTLP versus Nextbridge is there is a possibility, however remote, that sometime between now and Nextbridge selling itself or whatever, uh, uh, a cash settlement comes from your broker dealer and you get liquidity just like that. They call you up and they say, we're willing to pay you $25 a share, Victor. And you say, damn, I'm out of here. That if, if that's valuable to you, that possibility exists. But equally possible is they won't call you for a long time. When they call you, it's five bucks. You know, unfortunately, uh, I my opinion, Victor, is we gave a year. Nothing good happened. So it's time to start taking that action that we can to protect our own resources. And you know where I stand. Pete, when I first called uh, E-Trade, they wanted uh, 200 and something for each thing. That I think last time they transferred it for free. This time it was $60. I, yeah, I don't think they should charge you, by the way. You're the best, Deacon Blue, but, I, but you're also rich. Gonna be.
Well, you know, Deacon, you're you're pretty uh, perceptive about me because I got the certificate out, and when I compare it to the other one, the first one feels like a stock certificate. This one, the, it doesn't feel the same as certificates usually do. On the other hand, it is a you know a high grade of paper. It it's firm enough, crisp enough that it it's it's real. It has the electronic seal. It has the uh, certificates. It comes with the stapled uh, uh, receipt. So I think it is legitimate. I just think they changed the paper. But you think like I do. You think just like I do. Hey, Barbara. Um, wow, they did move it, Steve King. That's amazing. If in an IRA, that people should try to do if I was unable to do it. Well, Deacon, you have a point. Um, in a normal life, it should be automatic. But the one thing here is that in every other situation, the transfer is into a new company that's publicly traded so that the system can continue to allow counterfeits in your account. This is a private company. They couldn't do it. But. E-Trade has told me, Z Warner, E-Trade has told me I do not have to transfer to AST and that I have real shares. How would that go in court if they said I had the chance to transfer? You don't have real shares. You don't have real shares. I mean, you don't necessarily have real shares. I would not take their word for that. Call Z Warner, call AST, and see if your shares are registered with AST. Because if you have real shares uh, in your name, E-Trade will have separated those shares, put them in type one, and put them in safekeeping. I don't believe they did. I don't believe it. I do not believe it for a minute. So I wouldn't accept that, Z Warner. I just would not. And at, at a minimum, I'd write a letter to the head of E-Trade saying that you understand this is E-Trade's stance as regarding my shares. Don't just accept that. Thank you for giving an amount of time to NMNT. You're welcome. Other people probably hate it. I hope you're well. I hope you're good to see you. I appreciate everything you've done. Um, thank you, Morty Borg Jangles. I'm going to go walk my dog. Um, they, you know, uh, Scott Van Dyke, Greg McCabe is aware of this. And I think in a settlement, I think even in a payout, you've got to just register your, sh your shares with him. There's something you're supposed to do. It's on their frequently asked questions page. It might be a press release, but you can find it. Um, I transferred my shares from my IRA to my regular account. I don't expect any tax consequence from that because they're worthless right now in a tax basis. Uh, uh, but I can certainly justify that instead of the $8 I paid, the most recent transaction I've seen is at 250. So there's no gain, there's no taxable gain. All right, I'm at Nicole, so I can quit. Um, Robert Shugano. 
Randall Carlton and Graham are great. I, I like history, uh, and I and I love expanding my mind to what existed before the flood. Uh, and I don't think that threatens my belief in God, by the way. And I'm not asking anyone to believe in God. I'm just saying um, it's fascinating. One of the areas, Robert, that really intrigues me is if there was, were, and I believe by all evidence there was, a massively advanced civilization before the flood that spread around the world, they must have had energy. They didn't use the oil. They didn't use the gas. So what was that energy? That fascinates me. What was that energy? My, my supposition is that they used the magnetic or electric power of the earth itself and the pyramids all around the globe were a mechanism to put that energy into some sort of channels that craft and other things could use the electricity to fly and to produce. That's my guess, but I don't know. I don't. Thank you, Dominic. Charlie Mack. He said, if I were a lawyer, before your sister could say it, if I were a rich man. Heidi Moga, hi, Heidi. Heidi, ho. Oh, oh. Another MMTLP hearing is great. I'll go. Hey, we will we win? Answer me this. <laughs> You're obviously here to no, that's not happening. That is not happening. Historically, silver is basically well, actually, yet the the Brits priced it at 15.5, whatever it is, pounds, at a ratio of 15.5 to one. Why? Because silver came out of the ground at basically that ratio. But it, it, there's always been imbalances. When the Spanish took all the gold, silver back from the New World, it, it really wreaked havoc on the financial systems and the balances for a while. But uh, right now, silver is probably around 75 to 1. And I tell you, there it's accelerating. It's too bad. It means I can't build the position I wanted to build. But uh, no, 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 no. You're wrong, Beetle. Finger dividend when? Well, they 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 put out the filing uh, on the on the ninth, I think. Go to go to the SEC, but they haven't announced the record date yet. It it probably will be before the month is out. It'll probably be within the fortnight. No, they don't subtract seven dollars. Yeah, it's placeholders. It's been a week now, so it'll be soon. That's good, Lou. I would take them up on that. Two to three weeks, eighty bucks. I got, I got, I just got twelve hundred and sixty-four for sixty bucks. I would do it in a heartbeat. All right, I'm going down to the bottom. I'm going to sign out. While I go down, I wish all of you peace, love, and happiness. Remember to pray for Lou and his family. Pray for Jenny L and, and all the strength you can give her. Pray for all of us. Pray for busy brands, for his ongoing strength. Uh, what well, Maybe we should say a prayer for OJ. I'm sure he's going to need it. But I'd like to pray for peace in the world and peace for all the children around the world that are starving. 
and uh, pray for the animals. Uh, but, but anyway, let me see what I missed. Um, To shares are still the broker. Are they listing a minimum? I don't know because mine are gone now. Uh, answer is summer as NBH. What are we doing? I'm signing off. Aluminium. I, look, if we go to war, aluminum is going to get expensive. I just don't think you could. That's like that. That's like that Steve Martin joke that when he knows how to pick up women. Oh, I know how to. I know how to impress women. I walk up to him, and then it fades to him. He says, "Oh, I've made a lot of money." And he's swinging his drink. I bought cardboard at ten dollars a ton, and I sold it at fourteen dollars a ton. And the girls look impressed. Let's see. I bought two tons. And, well, you figure it out. Well, that's how I feel about aluminum. How do you buy it? Where do you store it? Where am I? That's an existential question. Where are any of us? Wise old man. 125 US dollar. Yeah. And and Tim, you bring up the other point. If we fill it up, we give um, Greg McCabe a tool to get a settlement, to, to then finance his company, and then to create what I think could be a really exciting independent or major oil and gas company. The Borg built the pyramids. All right. I'm going to leave it at this. Mosey Beer, love you. I'm going to leave it at that. Can't get much better than that. So I'm going to sign out. I'm going to go walk my dog. Thank you for tuning in. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I went through where. Oh, there's more. Amen, Mabel. Thank you, Russ the Hunter, Donna. Mosey Bear, uh, you are a good, oh, there. That's good. <laughs> um, I did talk about LGIQ. I'll just summarize it quickly because I really got to go. This is the chart on LGIQ. Um, I think it's broken out of this resistance, but then it's broken above the 50-day moving average. So that becomes support. And I don't see any of this as real resistance. There's so little volume down here. I see this gap is important. And that's at 15 cents, 15 cents. So I don't know. You buy it at two and a half, maybe it goes to 15 cents. Maybe it goes to five cents. Maybe you get out of 10 cents. But anyway, that's the trade I see. All right, I'm going to sign out. And uh, we'll say peace and uh, catch on down the highway. <laughs>